Welcome. On behalf of Mr. Paul Brusco, Class of 1982, past chairperson of the Board of Trustees, Mr. Mario Ciampi, Class of 1978, current chairperson of the Board of Trustees, Father Christopher Devron, President, the administration, faculty, and staff, I am pleased to declare the 175th commencement exercises for the Fordham Prep Class of 2020 in session. This is a day of celebration and joy. It's also a day to honor our graduates of the historic class of 2020. We gather on Rowan Athletic Field this year under unique circumstances, but nevertheless join together as one community of faith, scholarship, and service. This is a moment that deserves great dignity and attention, and we thank you for your cooperation in making this such a special ceremony. Please stand and join with Mr. Ken Farnham, class of 1975, and Elizabeth Farnham in singing our national anthem and remain standing for the benediction which will be given by Father Stan Okonski, SJ. St. Ignatius de Loyola, the founder of the Society of Jesus in Jerusalem. But we also celebrate another historic occasion, the graduation of Fordham Prep Class of 2020. Well, Class of 2020, right? You've arrived. And we faculty and administrators, right, for the last four years, came along for the ride with you. But now, we have to stay behind and let you go forward. Because the future belongs more to you than it does to us. I, but know that our love and our prayers go with you. So let us now pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good and gracious God, Father, we are certainly aware that you are a God of mysteries and miracles, ironies and surprises. Right? Four years ago, four short years ago, right, these young men stood as boys before a road that seemed daunting and scary. With many twists and turns, hills and valleys, some I, seemed I, almost incomparable and others rugged. But supported by friends, teachers, and friends, I, I, you moved ahead cautiously and yet confidently. You found I, that uh, the best I, of times I, sometimes seemed like the worst of times. I. 
But uh, your greatest triumphs were won only by sacrifice and hard work. Each milestone brought you new friendships, some so deep they will last a lifetime. And the best teachers, administrators, coaches refused to allow you to settle for anything less than the best that you could summon up from yourself. Some of those times may have been painful, but then eventually rewarding. Now we faculty and administrators uh, pulled the side of that road right, to let you pass uh, beyond us. Right? Hopefully uh, you discovered that road has a name, right? Emmaus. Right? Like those two first disciples of Jesus, may you always recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread of the Eucharist, that you may recognize him in others and especially yourself. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Each year, a member of the graduating class is selected to speak for the class on this occasion. This year, the Senior Awards Committee and the senior class itself has selected McLean F. Farrell. I now call upon McLean to share his reflections on the experience of the class of 2020. Good morning, Father Debron, Dr. Petriello, members of the Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, parents, family, those watching from home, and especially members of the class of 2020. I'd like to begin by thanking the administration for their commitment and effort to making this event happen for us and the alumni community who supported and inspired us with their letters this spring. Over two months ago, I had the privilege to address you virtually as we celebrated the day that would have been our graduation from Fordham Prep. Today, I'm grateful to stand before you in person. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 reads, I fought the good fight, I finished the race, I've kept the faith. To me, St. Paul's words to his friend Timothy encapsulate not only our last four years of the prep, but these past few months of our lives. Years and months that were not always easy and which didn't always go as expected, but during which we have constantly strived to move forward in the face of adversity. Today, we finally crossed the finish line as brothers, having fought the good fight together. The last time I spoke to you, I saw our class would strive for greatness, addressing and conquering the challenges our world would present to us. Already, many of you have proved me right as the class of 2020 has begun to demonstrate just how great it is. Since May, I've witnessed classmates take tremendous steps as leaders. Some of us standing together to demand social justice and societal change. Others taking initiative and providing for those who've been afflicted by the coronavirus, including by helping keep the dreams of our younger prep brothers alive, by donating time and money to raise funds for those Rams who, because of the present circumstances, may not be able to return to the prep this fall. We've also seen members of our class continue to excel athletically, as Aiden Curry will play for the MLB's Texas Rangers, and Miguel Negrete will compete for the Honduran national track and field team this fall. Our successes have also been accompanied by some heartache, as we recently experienced a great loss of our former classmate, Brandon Hendricks, whose life was taken from us in an act to quote our freshman from the mentor, Mr. Distinti, of cowardice and callous indifference to the sacredness of every human life. The losses we've faced together as a community serve as reminders to each of us today. Reminders about the fragility of our human lives and reminders to take advantage of each moment we are blessed with on this earth. Reminders that we have a higher purpose to live, to live meaningful lives driven by faith, scholarship, and service. To be honest, giving this speech today is a bit of a surreal experience because since we are, we are closer now than we were in May to beginning the next chapter of our lives. For all of us, the next few weeks will come with the realization that these are our final days at home, our last moments with each other and with our loved ones before moving on to college. But at the same time, today provides much needed closure to a period of our lives which couldn't be described in any other way than as uncertain. In the last five months, our lives have changed drastically and forever, as we've been called to persevere in ways we never could have imagined. 2020 will be a year the world will never forget. That is undeniable. 
But for the 242 of us graduating today, it will be much more than that. It will be the year from which we go forward together, stronger, smarter, more loving, and more driven than ever before. Because 2020 is the year that forged us into men, men of character, action, and integrity. Men who will take the lessons, these life-altering lessons these past five months have taught us and use them to fight the good fight for the rest of our lives as men for and with others. Men who will not only become the next generation of leaders in our world, but men who are well equipped with the tools to take on the many challenges this world will present to us and prevail. Despite all the hardship we've experienced this year, these most unusual circumstances have without a doubt taught us a variety of lessons. Lessons in perseverance, sure, but more importantly, personal lessons which will stick with us long after the conclusion of today's ceremony. The class of 2020 will not be defined by this virus and all the hardship it left in its wake, but by how we rose despite it. Touching on the need for our world to continue to move in the direction of positive change, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. Whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. In a similar thought, President Theodore Roosevelt uttered the words, the credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena. He who at his best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly. These great men from separate time periods speak of the same lessons we've learned this year. Sometimes life will throw you a curveball. Your plans will be derailed, your expectations thwarted, your dreams crushed. But it's how we rise from these defeats and continue to move forward that defines the men we will become. Our experiences at Fordham Prep and with each other have certainly echoed these great words, preparing us to continue pushing forward and persevering for the rest of our lives. To be men of action, men constantly in the arena, battling for what we believe in, moving forward, taking risks, and never settling. May these lessons, which we have learned here, remain with us as we move into this new and exciting chapter of our lives. May we always maintain a clear view of the unique plan which God has for each of us. And may Fordham Prep always remain a place we call home. Congratulations, and may God bless the class of 2020. Thank you. Thank you for your beautiful words, inspiring. Uh, sometimes life throws us a curveball. Who knew when we, were, uh, when we announced the date of graduation that we'd be moving it and uh, we'd all be here in smaller groups. Um, just a word of uh, personal gratitude to the class for the ways in which you have sacrificed, uh, your generosity of spirit, and the ways in which you gave up so much so that other people could be healthy is truly a sign of your commitment to becoming a man for others. So I am grateful, as are all of the administration and the faculty and staff at Fordham Prep. But right now, it gives me um, the greatest of pleasure to introduce the 2020 graduation speaker, Bob Gomprecht, class of 1965. The last time that Bob was on this stage, he was the principal of the prep, maybe not this stage, but certainly the commencement stage. Bob had been running graduation by that time for a long, long time. So let me tell you a little bit about Bob. And you know, sometimes um, these introductions of speakers can take you into their origins and talk about their, their degrees and their diplomas. Um, I'm not gonna do that this morning uh, because um, as Dennis Ahern uh, advised me, there's so many things that I can tell you about what Bob has done for you by his contributions to this institution. It's unquestionable that Bob brought Fordham Prep into the 21st century without abandoning faith, scholarship, and service and the traditions which have led us here. As principal and faculty member, Bob reawakened the Ignatian character and the Jesuit nature of Fordham Prep by shaping it in conjunction with the Jesuit Secondary Schools Association into a mission-driven organization. Bob created a new hiring procedure where being dedicated to the mission of Fordham Prep became a crucial component of hiring decisions so that first and foremost, the teachers hired at Fordham Prep 
had to demonstrate a commitment to the Jesuit mission and the Ignatian identity. On the student formation level, Bob presided over the rewriting of the grad at grad to make it specific to Fordham Prep. And this is the basis on which your sons experienced the grad at grad over these four years. Bob added a faculty retreat to the Prep's retreat program and supported the expansion of the student retreat program into sophomore and junior years. In addition to mission, Bob knew that academics was at the core of the prep's life. As a result, he moved the prep into the membership of the New York State Association of Independent Schools, and he raised the standards for admission to Fordham Prep. Bob began curriculum review at the prep and started the expansion of the visual and performing arts program by making it a requirement for graduation. How many of you have ever gone to consultation? Raise your hands. This was a, an innovation of Bob Gomprecht. Who has ever taken an AP class? Raise your hand. Bob nearly doubled the number of AP courses at the prep, and he presided over the introduction of Mandarin to the Modern Languages program. Who in this group rode and was a member of the crew program? We have a couple rowers here today. Bob introduced it. Who, who played rugby in this group? Any rugby players? Bob brought that back. There was no father's club until Bob pushed for it, and Bob was a driving force in the formation of Building Bridges, the prep student organization, which expresses a commitment to union dignity, respect, and equality, especially for those in the LGBT community. There was no faculty development and supervision program at Fordham Prep until Bob created one. Bob was also the author of the Prep's significant increase in the hiring of women faculty and the hiring of the first female academic administrator. And always on the lookout for the future, Bob shepherded the one-to-one -one tablet program into the Prep in what one New York State Association of Independent Schools visitors, visitor described as the most successful transition to a one-to-one -one program he had ever seen. But the hallmark of Bob's affect on the prep was in the freedom, the respect, and the love and care that he gave to our students and our faculty and which they returned. Today's a special day for Bob because those of you who don't know him will recognize his last name. His grandson Matthew will be graduating in our next group. And it is uh, my greatest pleasure and privilege to welcome him back to Fordham Prep at this time as our speaker. So allow me to present Robert Gomprecht, class of 1965. Thank you, Father Deverin. There's really nothing left for me to say. Um, <clears throat> but it is a pleasure to be here. Mr. Mario Ciampi, the current incoming chair of the board, Paul Brusco, the outgoing chair, other members of the board, Father Devrin, Dr. Petriello, colleagues on the faculty and staff and administration, parents, and revered guests, those watching at home, and especially members of the class of 2020. It's an honor to be invited to give this commencement address. I thank you all. As John Denver sang, it's good to be back home again. Let me begin with a heartfelt shout out to the class of 2020. It's a very impressive, historic class. Your accomplishments are so great in so many areas. You are the class that brought would have prepped to the end of one decade and into another, and on top of that has had to deal with this pandemic. McLean, great job. Nice listening to you. Special congratulations to you seniors for setting a Fordham Prep record that will probably never be broken for the longest senior cut day in the Prep's history. Each of you should be so proud. 
Last January, when I started thinking about what to say, before the pandemic tore into our lives, we had yet to experience all the suffering, personal pain, and death that it would bring. The quarantines, the homeschooling, the loss of social interactions like the prom, separations of families from loved ones who are sick, and all too often, the family member and friends dying alone. I want to acknowledge what a sad and painful way this is for you seniors to end your years at the prep. I thought back to my own senior year, it would have been so very different without a prom, a graduation, signing each other's yearbooks, and all the wonderful things that bring closure to four great years at Fordham Prep. I'm sure it feels like a severe wound that could color your future interactions with the prep. But I am aware that the prep, your families, and your friends have invented many ways to celebrate your graduation. And I hope you can see how proud we all are of you. I do wonder how my own class would have dealt had we been confronted by such profound and frustrating events. My class has always been close. Most of us loved our time at the prep, learned a lot about ourselves, made friends and developed respect for each other. We stayed in touch. We came to reunions in huge numbers and renewed friendships. I believe that if my class had experienced a similar upheaval, we would have suffered a wound similar to yours. But I also believe that our ties to each other and our pride in being graduates of Fordham Prep would have brought us back together at the prep eventually. And my prayer is that this will happen for everyone in this class. As a concluding thought about the pandemic, I want to refer to a sermon that Martin Luther King Jr. gave at the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church in Montgomery, Alabama on Easter Sunday, 1959. From the first time I read this some years ago, it has struck a chord with me. King recounts that he himself, King, had just returned from a trip to the Holy Land. He recalled falling to his knees and weeping during a visit to Calvary, the cross. He observes that Jesus' sacrifice on the cross was something that no one could demand him to do, making him a man who had an amazing capacity to be obedient to unenforceable obligations. Then King declared that there are but three types of people in the world. They are the lawless who break laws and don't abide by the codes of society. There are the law abiding, those whose standards of con conduct de derive from without, from man-made laws and the societal, societal values and customs and he said, that's probably most of us. And then there are those who follow interior codes of conduct, who are obedient to the unenforceable. The people in those wonderful, beautiful words that Shakespeare said about Desdemona, in their goodness, in their goodness, they hold it's something of a vice, an evil, not to do more than is required. These are the people who change history and make history. They come around occasionally, King said. But the pandemic, my friends, has revealed that in fact these people are all around us in emergency rooms, ICUs, cleaning hospitals and subways, in EMS trucks, fire stations, supermarkets, and driving buses, living and working for people who are outside their own homes despite the pandemic that engulfs us. They deserve our deepest thanks today and every day as best we can give it. My family has a long connection to Fordham Prep. My dad graduated from the prep in 1941. 1937, he left his apartment on Briggs Avenue, 2603 Briggs Avenue, where I lived eventually and walked a few blocks down Fordham Road to the entrance by the Metro North Station and entered the campus to begin high school at Fordham Prep. He was a good student and lived with his parents, Charlotte 
and Clarence Gomprecht, my grandparents, and his grandmother, Sarah Barr, a lovely Irish lass. He was an only child. The family struggled financially. My grandfather had managed a movie theater on Fordham Road up near the concourse. There used to be two on opposite sides of Fordham Road many years ago. And during the Great Depression, he lost his job. And he was unable to find work from that point on. When my dad was accepted into Fordham Prep, his parents had no money to pay the tuition. So his grandmother, Sarah Barr, who was working as a policewoman, they were called matrons at the time, paid the tuition. And I, I share this point because my family's four-generation relationship with Fordham began the way it does for so many prep students. A smart, talented young man is accepted to the prep and his parents are unable to pay the tuition. So family bands together to help cover the cost. Now I would bet there are people in front of me now who have similar stories. And look what evolved from that generosity of my great-grandmother, Sarah Barr. I graduated from the prep, the graduate school and college. My son Bob, Matt's dad, graduated from the prep and the college. Bob's wife, Paula, graduated from the college. My son Chris graduated from the prep and the law school where he met his wife, Diana, at Fordham Law. And their son Matt graduates today. Chris's son Luke will be entering the prep as a freshman this September. Beyond that, my daughter Amy went to the college in the graduate school. My sister Ellen went to the college. And my brother-in-law, Jimmy Heafy, graduated from the prep. There are two more family members who did not attend Fordham, but by virtue of support over many years, are truly members of our Fordham family. My mom, Kathleen, the matriarch of this family, as loving and sharp and supportive and feisty into her 90s as ever. And my bride, Alana, who has been my companion, counselor, my truest friend and love for more than 50 years. That's an incredible legacy. So on behalf of my family, I want to thank Sarah Barr, who's up there somewhere. And thanks to all. <laughs> thanks to all the unrecognized family members and friends who have helped make Fordham Prep education possible over the years for so many deserving men. Some final thoughts for you to take with you as you leave the prep. I'm reminded of the many alumni that I've met over the years. And I was thinking about what impresses me when I meet them as adults. About 10,000 of them graduated while I was teaching or administrating at Fordham Prep. And about 5,000 have their names on my, my name on their diplomas. And there's another 187 who are my classmates at the prep. That's a lot of alums that I call upon to help me with this part of the talk. I want to relay a conversation I had with my next door neighbor a few years ago. This is a New York City fireman, a great guy. He did not go to Fordham Prep. He went to another Catholic high school in the Bronx. But he has a younger brother who went to Fordham Prep, and he holds Fordham Prep in very high esteem. So occasionally, we'd get together outside our yards, and he'd be telling me that a new guy came into the firehouse. And in talking to him, he realized that the, the new guy had gone to Fordham Prep. And for a while, he would ask me, why would anybody go to Fordham Prep and then become a fireman? It just, for some reason, didn't compute with him. But eventually, I think I got the point across. Service to others is such a key part of Jesuit education, and it's alive and well at Fordham Prep. I can't think of a better way to live that out than to be a fireman or a policeman. I am especially proud of every graduate who makes his living in the service of others. 
And for those of you who can do that, it's awesome. But if you can't, set aside some time in your life to give service to others, perhaps in your community. Make service to others an important part of your life. Another thing that impresses me is the habit of reflection. And you spent four years at Fordham Prep practicing the art of reflection. The instrument in the Jesuit world that Ignatius created was, is the examine, and you've probably done hundreds of them in your time here at the prep. Just looking back at a day or a week or some period of time, and the way it was expressed originally is looking back and finding out what gives you consolation that you did and what gives you desolation. A better translation, I think, is looking back and find, finding out where God was in your life and what about that gave you, brought you closer to God and what about that moved you away from God. And you can use this, this exercise to look back at other things as well, family, friends, your career, um, to make decisions about to go forward. So I'm going to ask you to make reflection an important part of your life. What else are you bringing from Fordham Prep? Well, we believe you're a competent student. That's a given. But more than that, we want you to love yourself for the many gifts that you have been given, to extend yourselves in loving ways to others, to think for yourself, not allow others to manipulate you, to choose not to manipulate others for your own gain, not to be dog-eat-dog dog competitive, but young men who compete with a moral sense, cooperative, decisive, young men. We want you every day to solve your problems. Make these traits an important part of your life. We don't know what the future holds, but we do know that it involves change. It will require us to step out of our comfort zone because there is a greater need, a greater challenge, a greater glory of God that will draw us, even compel us to do that. Even now, we see so much injustice, so much prejudice, so much doubt and division. We are called to step out more courageously than ever as the world changes at a rapid rate. And if our view of the world is not evolving, then it's not alive, and it soon will become irrelevant. There's an old Broadway show, a chorus line. It's a story about actors and actresses trying out to get roles in the chorus line of a musical. And in the play, as they try out, they tell about themselves, and they get to be very close and supportive of each other. Towards the end of tryouts, one character, who's already been given a role in the play, injures himself badly at a rehearsal, damaging his knee. And he's carried off to the hospital. And the rest of those trying out are standing there in disbelief and begin some discussion about how their careers could come to an end that suddenly. But after some discussion, they agree that they dance and they sing because they love it. And whatever happens to them, they will be free of regret. And they express this feeling in a song. The words of this song have often guided me as I consider next steps in my life. I would wonder when the direction I chose was complete, if I would be able to look back and feel that these words described my experience. Five years ago, I met with the prep faculty and staff to announce my leaving. But I wanted to be sure they understood how strong my feelings were for Fordham Prep and for my colleagues. So I concluded that meeting with the words of the song, and it's how I want to conclude this address. I hope these words resonate with you as you look back at your time at Fordham Prep and embark on the next phase of your life's journey. And if they don't quite resonate, I hope that with a little distance and time, you'll look back and you'll say, yeah, that, that was what Fordham Prep was to me. The song is what I did for love. Kiss good day to buy, kiss today goodbye, the sweetness and the sorrow. Wish me luck, the same to you. But I can't regret what I did for love. Look, my eyes are dry. The gift was ours to borrow. It's as if we always knew, and I won't forget what I did for love.
gone. Love is never gone. As we travel on, love is what we'll remember. So kiss today goodbye and point me toward tomorrow. We did what we had to do. Don't forget, can't regret what I did for love. So gentlemen, in the words of St. Ignatius, whose feast day we celebrate today, go forth and set the world on fire. God bless you all. Thank you so much, Bob, for your beautiful words. In my office, I have one of the 5,000 diplomas that you signed during your time as, as principal. And now, as I sit at your desk in the principal's office, it's, it's a privilege and an honor and a blessing to carry on your legacy in the service of faith, scholarship, and service, and all of our students here today. Father President, on the recommendation of the faculty of Fordham Preparatory School, I am pleased to present you for diplomas of graduation, the following students who have successfully completed the prescribed course of studies at Fordham Preparatory School. On the recommendation of the faculty and by the vote of the Board of Trustees, I am pleased to award diplomas of graduation to the class of 2020. A professional photographer will take a photograph of each graduate as he receives his diploma. The sample picture will be sent to your home or email address. We ask your cooperation by not interfering with the photographer and remaining in your seats. I would also ask all PrEP alumni and those associated with Fordham PrEP or Fordham University who are presenting diplomas to come up with your graduate and accompany him onto the stage. Thank you. And gentlemen, if you follow Robert Acevedo's lead, we're going to, going to go up these steps, across the stage, and down these steps. We begin with Robert G. Acevedo. <laughs> Michael D. Adair. Severio Paolo Emilio. <laughs> Kalani E. Anderar, not present. George Oliver Anderson. Ryan T. Angelo. <laughs> Skyler E. Antonio. Anthony Baez. <laughs> Matteo Gerard Balistreri. Edward Evan Barr.
Michael J. Barton, Jr. Mr. Joseph Bastianich, class of 1985, will present the diploma to his son, Ethan Alexander Bastianich. <laughs> Connor Patrick Begley. Nicholas J. Bellinger. E. Joseph Bell III. Nicholas J. Benavides. <laughs> Mr. John Bernardi, class of 1987, will present the diploma to his son, Jake A. Bernardi. Christopher B. Betancourt. <laughs> Brendan Christopher Borowski. Dennis Bunjai. <laughs> Roman M. Camerata. Mr. Anthony Canali, class of 1990, will present the diploma to his son, Dominic N. Canali. Jaden A. Carpentieri. <laughs> William M. Cassini. Thomas T. Chen. James J. Chessman.
Christopher M. Clow. Jeremy J. Quello. Keegan Edward Cohane. Norbert Dengler, class of 1949, unable to present the diploma to his grandson, David L. Kojikaru. Diego Colado Ramirez. Colin J. Coogan. <laughs> Ricardo Cortez Garcia, not present. <laughs> Christopher Lewis Casenza. James R. Coster, not present. <laughs> Nicholas Patrick Chotai. Matthew A. Kreese. Marco J. Crinieri. Cole Robert Croker. Aiden Edward Curry. Sean M. Curtin. <laughs> Stephen N. Dang. Andrew Thomas Lopez Davis. <laughs> James Gerald DiCarlo.
Michael E. Delatore. Dennis Carmine DeLucia. <laughs> Mr. Anthony DiMartino, class of 1985, will present the diploma to his son, Andrew A. DiMartino. Ms. Carmen Demiroski from Fordham University will present the diploma to her son, Demir Demiroski. and Peter Leonard Tomai. Ladies and gentlemen, let's congratulate Fordham Prep's class of 2020. All right, so we had no rehearsal, but I'm, uh, I'm relying on your wisdom after being here for four years that you're going to know what to do when I give you your cue here. So here it is. The members of the class of 2020 have requested an opportunity to publicly thank their parents for all they have done for them. Excellent. You guys don't need a rehearsal. This is extraordinary. You may be seated. So it is, you know, it's a loss that uh, you don't get to graduate with everyone in your class, that we are doing these piecemeal now. Uh, we have four more. Um, but one of, the, one of the benefits is that it's a shorter ceremony. So, for you. So uh, for mem members of the class of 2020, I would like to thank you for your four memorable years, great years here at Fordham Prep. This place will always be a home for you. Please remain engaged. You've now joined an exceptional group. Some of those men you saw handing diplomas on, the Fordham Prep alumni. Your accomplishments in college and beyond and especially, as Mr. Gomprecht reminded us, your commitment to service, to becoming a man for and with others, will enhance the history of our alumni. God bless you. Have a great day. Everyone is kindly now asked to stand and join in singing the alma mater. The words may be found in the back of the graduation program.
Ladies and gentlemen, I declare the first session of the 175th commencement of Fordham Preparatory School adjourned. Please join us in the singing of the Ram, and afterwards our graduates and guests will be led to exit Rowan Field as we prepare for our second ceremony. Gentlemen, the Ram.
Good morning. We are just about ready to begin our ceremony, so if everyone could please take your seats, that would be great. Thank you very much. On behalf of Mr. Paul Brusco, class of 1982, past chairperson of the Board of Trustees, Mr. Mario Ciampi, class of 1978, current chairperson of the Board of Trustees, Father Christopher Devron, president, the administration, faculty, and staff, I am pleased to declare the 175th commencement exercises for the Fordham Prep class of 2020 in session. This is a day of celebration and joy. It's also a day to honor our graduates of the historic class of 2020. We gather on Rowan Athletic Field this year under unique circumstances, but nevertheless join together as one community of faith, scholarship, and service. This is a moment that deserves great dignity and attention, and we thank you for your cooperation in making today so special. Please stand and join with Mr. Ken Farnham, class of 1975, and Elizabeth Farnham in singing the national anthem, and remain standing for the benediction, which will be given by Father Stan Okonski, SJ.
Today we celebrate the feast of St. Ignatius Loyola, the founder of the Society of Jesus, the Jesuits. Okay? But we also celebrate another historic occasion, the graduation of the Fordham Prep class of 2020. Well, class of 2020, right? you've arrived. Right? And we faculty and administrators, right, uh, after these four years, we came along for the ride. Right? But now, we have to stay behind and let you go. Because the road ahead right, belongs more to you than it does to us. But know this, that our love and our prayers go with you wherever you go. So let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Good and gracious God, Father, right? you are certainly a God of mysteries and miracles, ironies and surprises. Right? A short four years ago, these young men stood as boys before a road that seemed daunting and scary. With many twists and turns, hills and valleys, right, uh, some uh, steep right, and rugged, supported though by family, teachers, and friends, you moved ahead cautiously yet confidently. You found that the best knowledge right, was often won right, by the hardest efforts. The greatest triumphs right, were won only by sacrifice. Each milestone brought you new friendships, right, some so deep they will last a lifetime. And the best teachers, administrators, and coaches refused to allow you to settle for anything less than summoning up the best in yourselves. Some right, uh, of right, uh, the worst of times that actually became the best of times. Now we faculty and administrators are pulled to the side of the road to let you pass beyond us. Hopefully, right, you discovered that this road right, has a name, Emmaus. Like those first two disciples of Jesus, may you always recognize him in the breaking of the bread of the Eucharist, so that you may recognize him in others and in that most challenging person, yourself. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Each year, a member of the graduating class is selected to speak for the class on this occasion. This year, the Senior Awards Committee and the senior class itself has selected McLean F. Farrell. I now call upon McLean to share his reflections on the experience of the class of 2020. Good morning, Father Debron, Dr. Petriello, members of the Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, parents, family, and especially members of the class of 2020. I'd like to begin by thanking the administration for their commitment and effort to making this event happen for us, and the alumni community who supported and inspired us with their thoughtful letters this spring. Over two months ago, I had the privilege to address you virtually as we celebrated the day that would have been our graduation from Fordham Prep. Today, I'm grateful to stand before you in person. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 reads, I've fought the good fight, I've finished the race, I've kept the faith. To me, St. Paul's words to his friend Timothy encapsulate not only our last four years at the prep, but these past few months of our lives. Years and months that were not always easy and didn't always go as expected, but during which we have continued to persevere in the face of adversity. Today, we finally cross the finish line as brothers, having fought the good fight together. The last time I spoke to you, I said our class would strive for greatness, addressing and conquering the many challenges our world would present to us. Already, many of you have proven me right as the class of 2020 has begun to demonstrate just how great it is. Since May, I've witnessed classmates take tremendous steps as leaders. 
Some of us standing together to demand social justice and societal change. Others taking initiative and providing for those who've been afflicted by the coronavirus, including by helping keep the dreams of our younger prep brothers alive, who because of the present circumstances may not be able to return to the prep this fall. We've also seen members of our class continue to excel athletically, as Aiden Curry will play for the MLB's Texas Rangers and Miguel Negrete will compete for the Honduran national track and field team this fall. Our successes have also been accompanied by some heartache, as we recently experienced a great loss of our former classmate, Brandon Hendricks, whose life was taken from us in an act to quote our freshman mentor, Mr. Distinti, of cowardice and callous indifference to the sacredness of every human life. The losses we have faced together as a community serve as reminders to each of us, reminders about the fragility of our human lives and reminders to take advantage of each moment we are blessed with on this earth. Reminders that we have a higher purpose to live meaningful lives driven by faith, scholarship, and service. To be honest, giving this speech today is a bit surreal since we are closer now than we were in May to beginning the next chapter of our lives. For all of us, the next few weeks will come with the realization that these are our final days at home. Our last moments with our loved ones and with each other before moving on to college. But at the same time, today provides much needed closure to a period of our lives which couldn't be described in any other way than as uncertain. In the last five months, our lives have changed drastically and forever, as we've been called to persevere in ways we never could have imagined. 2020 will be a year the world will never forget. That is undeniable. But for the 242 of us graduating today, it will be much more than that. It will be the year from which we go forward together, stronger, smarter, more loving, and more driven than ever before. Because 2020 is the year that forged us into men. Men of character, action, and empathy. Men who will take the life-altering lessons of these past five months and use them to fight the good fight for the rest of our lives as men for and with others. Men who will not only become the next generation of leaders in our world, but men who are well equipped with the tools to take on the many challenges this world will present to us and prevail. Despite all the hardship we've experienced this year, these most unusual circumstances have without a doubt taught us a variety of lessons. Lessons in perseverance, sure, but more importantly, personal lessons which will stick with us long after the conclusion of today's ceremony. The class of 2020 will not be defined by what we lost to this virus and all the hardship it left in its wake, but by how we rose despite it. Touching on the need for our world to continue to move in the direction of positive change, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. In a similar thought, President Theodore Roosevelt uttered the words, the credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena. He who at his best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly. These lessons from these great men teach of the lessons we learned this year. Sometimes life will throw you a curveball. Your plans will be derailed, your expectations thwarted, your dreams crushed. But it's how we rise from these defeats and continue to move forward that defines the men we will become. Our experiences at Fordham Prep and with each other have certainly echoed these great words, teaching us to continue pushing forward and persevering for the rest of our lives, to be men of action, men constantly in the arena, battling for what we believe in, moving forward, taking risks, and never settling. May these lessons, which we have learned here, remain with us as we move into this new and exciting chapter of our lives. May we always maintain a clear view of the unique plan God has for each of us, and may Fordham Prep always remain a place we can call home. Congratulations, and may God bless the class of 2020. Thank you, McLean. It gives me the greatest of pleasure to introduce our 2020 graduation speaker, Bob Gompret, class of 1965. The last time that Bob was on the stage uh, was about an hour ago, but I mean, <laughs> previous to that, um, Bob was the uh, principal of Fordham Prep. And um, he ran graduation for many, many years. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about Bob uh, and not do it in the, in the conventional way. Usually when people introduce speakers, they 
They talk about their origins and their degrees, um, their diplomas, etc. But Bob is special to this place. And Bob has made a difference, whether you know it or not, to each graduate of the class of 2020. It is unquestionable that Bob brought Fordham Prep into the 21st century without abandoning the faith, scholarship, and service traditions which have led us here. He reawakened the Jesuit nature of Fordham Prep by shaping it in conjunction with the Jesuit Secondary Schools Association into a mission-driven organization. Bob created a new hiring procedure where being dedicated to the mission of Fordham Prep was a critical component of hiring decisions so that first and foremost, the teachers that we hire demonstrate a commitment to our Jesuit mission and Ignatian character. In terms of student formation, Bob presided over the rewriting of the grad at grad, which is so much at the heart of everything we do for each of you. Bob added a faculty retreat to the PREPS retreat program and supported the expansion of the student retreat program into sophomore and junior years, in which many of you experienced the Emmaus retreat. In addition to mission, Bob knew that academics was at the core of Fordham Prep's life. And as a result, he moved our, us into a membership with the New York State Association of Independent Schools. And he subsequently raised the standards for admission to Fordham Prep. Bob began the curriculum review here and started the expansion of the visual and performing arts program by making it a requirement for graduation. Now, how many of you have ever gone to consultation? Excellent, raise your hands, very good. This was Bob's idea, and he implemented it at the end of, prep, of each prep day. How many of you have ever taken an AP course? Bob nearly doubled the number of AP courses at the prep, and he presided over the introduction of Mandarin to the modern language curriculum. Who in this group has rowed with the crew team? Raise your hand. Any, okay, we at least have one, a couple. Bob introduced crew. Where are my rugby players? Any rugby players in the house? Well, we had a rugby program, but Bob brought it back. There was no father's club at Fordham Prep until Bob pushed for it, and Bob was the driving force in the formation of building bridges, the prep organization dedicated to human dignity and respect for all, especially for those who are members of the LGBT community. There was no faculty development and supervision program at the PrEP until Bob created one. Bob was the author of the PrEP's significant increase in the hiring of female faculty, faculty, and he hired our first woman academic administrator. Bob is always on the lookout for the future, and Bob shepherded the one-to-one -one device program into the PrEP, into what one New York State Association of Independent Schools visitor described as the most successful transition to one-to-one -one learning he had ever seen. Perhaps, however, the hallmark of Bob's impact on the PrEP was in the respect, the freedom, and the love that he gave to each student and every single one of the teachers that he hired and supported and cared for. And they returned that love and respect as well. Bob has a long family history to the prep, which he will share with you in a moment, um, and one special one today with the graduation of his grandson, Matthew. So please welcome Bob back to the graduation stage, Mr. Bob Gompret, class of 1965. Thank you, Chris. When I first heard Chris give that introduction, I came up and I said, there's nothing left to say, but that didn't stop me. Uh, it's great to be here. Mr. Paul Brusco, the outgoing chair of our board of trustees, Mr. Mario Ciampi, the incoming chair, other members of the trustees, Father Devron, 
Dr. Petriello, my former colleagues on the faculty, staff, and administration, parents, revered guests, and those watching at home, it's an honor to be invited to give this commencement address. I thank you all. As John Denver sang, it's good to be back home again. Let me begin with a heartfelt shout out to the impressive and historic class of 2020. Something about that number, 2020, just rings right. It's a nice number. Your accomplishments in so many areas are fitting for a class that has led Fordham Prep out of one decade and into another, and on top of that has had to deal with this, this pandemic. It's a great class. McLean, good job. Special congratulations to you seniors for setting a record that will probably never be beaten in the history of Fordham Prep for the longest senior cut day. <laughs> Each one of you should be so proud. Matthew, love you, buddy. Last January when I started writing for this commencement address, there was no pandemic. It had not yet come into our lives. All the pain and suffering and death that it would bring was unknown to us. The quarantine, the homeschooling, the loss of social interactions like the prom, the separation of families from those suffering from this disease, and all too often family members dying alone. I want to acknowledge what a sad and painful way this is for you seniors to end your four years at Fordham Prep. I've thought back to my own senior year. It would have been incredibly different without a prom, without a formal graduation, signing each other's yearbooks, and many other wonderful things that bring closure to four years at Fordham. I'm sure it feels like a severe wound that could color your future interactions with the prep. But I'm also aware that the prep and your family and your friends have invented many ways to celebrate your graduation. I hope you can all see how proud we are of you. I do wonder how my own class would have reacted had we been confronted by such profound and frustrating events. My class has always been close. Most of us loved our time at the prep. We learned a lot about ourselves. We made friends and developed respect for each other. We came back to reunions. We kept in touch. We renewed friendships. But I believe that if my class had experienced a similar upheaval, we too would have suffered a wound similar to yours. But our ties to each other and to the prep are strong, and I think they would have eventually brought us back together at the prep. And my prayer for you is this happens to each one of you. As a concluding thought about this pandemic, <clears throat> I want to refer to a sermon that the Reverend Martin Luther King gave at the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church in Montgomery, Alabama, on Easter Sunday, 1959. He talked about his recent trip to the Holy Land, and he recalled falling to his knees and weeping during a visit to Calvary, the cross. He observed that Jesus' sacrifice on the cross was something that nobody could demand of him, making him a man who had the amazing capacity to be obedient to unenforceable obligations. Then King declared that there are but three groups of people in this world. There are the lawless, those who break laws but don't abide by the codes of society. There are the law abiding, those whose standards of conduct derive from external uh, laws made by man and the values and customs of the society. And he said most of us fall into that category. And then there are those who follow an interior code of conduct, 
rules that are larger than themselves. These are the people who are obedient to the unenforceable. The people who, in the beautiful words that Shakespeare said about Desdemona, in their goodness, they hold it something of a vice, an evil, not to do more than is required. These are people who change history and make history. King said they come along occasionally. This pandemic, my friends, has revealed that in fact these people are all around us, in emergency rooms and ICUs, cleaning hospitals and subways, in ES EMS trucks, fire stations, supermarkets, driving buses, living and working out of their homes to help other people despite the pandemic that is engulfing us. They deserve our biggest, deepest thanks. For without them, everything would be even worse. Thank them today and every day as best you can. As Father Deverin said, my family has a long history with Fordham Prep. My dad graduated from the prep in 1941. In 1937, he left his apartment at 2603 Briggs Avenue, which is just up the road, and walked a few blocks down Fordham Road and entered the campus through the gate by the Metro North Station to begin high school at Fordham Prep. He was a good student. He lived with his parents, Charlotte and Clarence Gomprecht, my grandparents, and with his grandmother, Sarah Barr, a wonderful Irish woman. He was an only child, and that family struggled financially. My grandfather managed a movie theater that was up on Fordham Road near the concourse. Back in those days, there were two, one on either side of Fordham Road. And in the Great Depression, he lost his job and was never able to find employment after that. When my dad was accepted into Fordham Prep, his parents had no money to pay for the tuition. So his grandmother, Sarah Barr, who worked for many years as a New York City policewoman, called Matrons at the time, and actually worked out of the 52nd Precinct, the little red police building just around the corner, she paid the tuition. I share this story to point out that my family's four-generation relationship with Fordham began the way it does for so many prep students. A smart, talented young man is accepted to the prep, and his parents are un unable to afford the tuition, so family members band together to help out and cover the cost. And I am sure some of you in this room have similar stories. And look what evolved from Sarah Barr's generosity. After my dad, I graduated from the prep, the college, and the graduate school. My son, Bob, graduated from the prep and the college. Bob's wife, Paula, graduated from the college. Their son, Matthew, is graduating today. My son, Christopher, went to the prep and the law school. His bride, Diana, they met at Fordham Law School. And their oldest child, Luke, will be coming into Fordham Prep in September as a freshman. Beyond that, our daughter Amy went to the college and the graduate school. My sister Ellen graduated from the college. And my brother-in-law, Jimmy Heafy, graduated from the prep. There are two more family members who did not attend Fordham. But by virtue of their support over many years, they're truly members of our Fordham family. My mom, Kathleen, the matriarch of this family, as loving and sharp and supportive and feisty in her 90s as ever. And my bride, Alana, who has been my companion, my counselor, my truest friend, and my love for over 50 years. What an incredible legacy. So on behalf of my family, I want to thank you, Sarah Barr. She's up there somewhere listening. And thanks to all the unrecognized family members who have helped make Fordham Prep education possible over the years for so many deserving young men. Some final thoughts to take with you as you leave the prep. In these 
are thoughts that occur to me as I, as I think about the alums that I've met. And I've met a lot of alums. Over 10,000 young men graduated from Fordham Prep while I taught here or administrated here. Of that number, about 5,000 have my name on their diploma. And there's another 187, they're my classmates from another century. So I ask myself, what impresses me about these people as I meet them as adults? And it reminded me of a conversation I had some years ago with a neighbor, a New York City fireman and a great guy. Went to another Catholic school in the Bronx, but his younger brother went to Fordham Prep. And this fireman holds Fordham Prep in high esteem as a result of that. Occasionally, a new fireman would come into the house, the firehouse, and this guy would come home, we'd be talking, and he'd say, you know, I met a guy who went to Fordham Prep. He came in as a fireman. He said, why would anybody go to Fordham Prep and then want to be a fireman? It didn't compute for him. And it took a while to let him see what I think is the reason it's a perfect fit. I shared with him how service to others is so central to Jesuit education and alive and well at Fordham Prep. I think he finally got it. So I want to say I'm proud of every graduate who works serving others, including and maybe especially firemen and police. I want each of you to serve those around you. If you can make your living serving others, that's awesome. If not, though, save time in your life to give service to other people, probably in your community. Make service an important part of your life. What else impresses me? Well, people I meet, graduates I meet, who will have clearly some sense of reflection. They like looking back and trying to analyze how things have gone. And you spent four years practicing the art of reflection. In the Jesuit world, the instrument created by Ignatius through which we do that is called the examine. One way to describe it is to take the words of Ignatius and translate them literally. It's like looking back and seeing where God was in your life and what caused you, gave you consolation and what gave you desolation. Uh, today we tend to think of it more as what have I done that's brought me closer to Christ and what have I done that's pushed me away from Christ. And you can use this habit of reflection, looking back at your family, your friends, your colleagues, and apply it to help make important decisions in your life. What else are you bringing from Fordham Prep? Well, we believe you are competent students, right? You assume that? But more than that, we want you to love yourselves for the many gifts that you have been given to extend yourselves in loving ways to other people, to think for yourself and not allow people to manipulate you, to choose not to manipulate others for your own gain, to not be doggy dog competitive, but young men who compete on a moral level, competent, cooperative, decisive, competing with a moral sense. We want you to solve your problems every day Make these traits an important part of your life. We do not know what the future holds, but we do know it will involve change. It will require us to step out of our comfort zones because there is a greater need, a greater challenge, a greater glory of God that draws us, in fact, compels us to make these changes. Even now, we see so much Injustice, so much prejudice, so much doubt and division. But we are being called to step out more courageously as the world around us changes at a more rapid rate. And if our view of the world is not changing, not evolving, then it's soon to become irrelevant. But make continued growth an important part of your life. There's an old Broadway show, a chorus line. It's the story of actors who are trying out to be in the chorus line of a musical. The chorus line is in the background of the musicals. They dance, they sing, but they're not the stars. Over the course of the tryouts, which is what this show chronicles, the actors and actresses become very close 
and supportive of each other. Towards the end of the tryouts, one of them, one character named Paul, who has already been given a role in the play, falls and badly injures himself during a rehearsal and is literally carted off the stage with a damaged knee and may never dance again. Those who are left behind stand in disbelief, realizing that they too could have a sudden end to their careers in the musical. They have some discussion and they all agree that they dance and sing because they love it. And whatever happens to them, they will be free of regret. And they express that feeling in a song. The words of this song have often guided me as I considered next steps in my life. I would wonder when the direction I chose was complete, if I would be able to look back and feel that the words of this song describe my experience. Five years ago, I met with the prep faculty and staff to announce that I was leaving, but I wanted to be sure they understood how much I appreciated my colleagues in the school. So I concluded that meeting with the words of this song, and it's how I will conclude this address. And I hope these words resonate with you as you look back at your years at the prep and embark on the next phase of your life. If they don't quite resonate yet, I hope with a little time and distance, you'll look back and find they do, in fact, represent some of your feelings about the prep. The song is What I Did for Love. Kiss today, goodbye. The sweetness and the sorrow. Wish me luck. The same to you. But I can't regret what I did for love. Look, my eyes are dry. <clears throat> the gift was ours to borrow. It's as if we always knew, and I won't forget what I did for love. Gone. Love is never gone. As we travel on, love's what we'll remember. So kiss today goodbye and point me toward tomorrow. We did what we had to do. Won't forget, can't regret what I did for love. So gentlemen, in the words of Ignatius, whose feast day we celebrate today, go forth and set the world on fire. God bless you all. Thank you, Bob, for your beautiful words. In my office, I have one of the 5,000 diplomas that Bob signed during his tenure as principal. And it's deeply humbling to continue his legacy in, in the principal's office as I sit at his desk uh, and reflect back on the ways that he formed me as a student uh, so many years ago. So thank you, Bob. Father President, on the recommendation of the faculty of Fordham Preparatory School, I am pleased to present to you for diplomas of graduation the following students who have successfully completed the prescribed course of studies at Fordham Preparatory School. On the recommendation of the faculty and by the vote of the Board of Trustees represented on this dais by Tom Huvain, our Vice Chairman, Class of 1984, I am pleased to award diplomas of graduation to the Class of 2020. A professional photographer will take a photograph of each graduate as he receives his diploma from Father Devron. The sample picture will be sent to your home or email address. We thank you in advance for your cooperation by not interfering with the photographer, the graduates, or the view of our parents and guests. I would ask PrEP alumni and those associated with Fordham PrEP or Fordham University who are presenting diplomas today to come up with your graduate and accompany him onto the stage. And I realize we didn't get a chance to have graduation rehearsal, so I would now ask all graduates in the first two rows to please stand and move to this side uh, to line up alphabetically with Mr. Broussard. Christopher Joseph Devine.
Jared A. Diaz. Jonathan A. Diaz. Harrison Robert J. Donaldson. Jake Thomas Douglas. Thomas Patrick Downs. Colin J. Drew. Dennis Patrick Driscoll. Robel Ephraim. Salvatore D. Emanuele. McLean F. Farrell. William Kevin Finnerty. James R. Fitzgerald. Francis George Fitzpatrick. Douglas, Douglas J. Fleming. Hector Flores, Jr. James G. Flynn. Kevin J. Folkerts. Benjamin L. Falana. William T. Falana. Luca M. Fratracangeli. The next two rows, please stand. Make your way to the side and line up with some distance in between you. Randy Z. Fulton. Aaron C. Gage Nicholas. Claudio Joseph Galea. Liam W. Gallagher. Clement H. Galluccio. Aiden James Galvin. Not present. Thomas M. Garcia. Patrick Spencer Gianello. Sean Barrett Geary. Harrison Joseph Georges. Stephen O. Guys.
with memory of Dr. Robert Feely Gomprecht, class of 1941, and member of the Fordham Prep Hall of Honor. Mr. Robert J. Gomprecht, class of 1965, will present the diploma to his grandson. And Mr. Robert J. Gomprecht, class of 1989, will present the diploma to his son, Matthew R. Gomprecht. George Luis Gonzalez, Jr. Miles F. Gould. Louis Thomas Govin. Vincent Michael Greco. Alec R. Green. Mark J. Griffin. Raphael St. Clair Griffith. Giordanis Guerrero. Sean Thomas Halbert. Brendan Martin Mackenzie Hamilton. Duncan Arthur Hamilton. Spencer Thomas Healy. Peter J. Herity. Aiden F. Higgins. Christopher Clarkson Hooper, Jr. and Nicholas George Hunt. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Fordham Prep Class of 2020. Congratulations. In his remarks, uh, Mr. Gomprecht spoke movingly of those three types of persons as described in, in King's sermon. And uh, he spoke of those who follow an interior code, looking out for other people because it's the moral right. And today we are surrounded by people who have done that and are preparing to do that as Fordham Prep will open its doors in just a few weeks. Uh, one of them is retiring, and we'd like to pay tribute to Mr. Jack Foley, who can't be with us today. Uh, several of them, though, are, are ringing this tent and in the side pockets, and I would like to uh, offer my gratitude to all of the Fordham Prep faculty. Thank you.
Now, you guys did so well without a rehearsal, I'm going to ask you to do something else on the fly, and you're going to understand what I mean, I think, I hope. Maybe this is a sign. If you don't, then maybe we should take your diploma back from you. But um, I know that if you had an opportunity, you would, re you would request one from me to publicly thank your parents for all they have done for you. Here's your chance. perform stunningly, outstandingly. <laughs> Members of the class of 2020, thank you for four spectacular years. Thank you for the sacrifice of these past months in which you gave up so much so that others literally could live and have health. Fort Prep will always be a home for you. Please remain engaged with us. You've now joined an exceptional group, some of whom you saw stand with their sons here, the Fordham Prep alumni body. Your accomplishments in college and beyond, and especially the ways in which you dedicate yourselves to serve those in need, will enhance the already illustrious history of our alumni. God bless you. Everyone is now kindly asked to stand and joined in the singing of the alma mater. The words may be found in the back of your graduation program. Ladies and gentlemen, I declare the second session of the 175th commencement of Fordham Preparatory School adjourned. Before we join in the singing of the ram to conclude our ceremony, we invite family members to exit the area under the tent to take a few moments to have photos on the backfield before we transition to the next group for our next ceremony. Gentlemen, the Ram. Oh, <laughs> 
Welcome to our celebration today. We are just about ready to begin, so we invite everyone to come on in to the tent and take your seats. Thank you. We're about ready to begin. Thank you so much. On behalf of Mr. Paul Brusco, class of 1982, past chairperson of the Board of Trustees, Mr. Mario Ciampi, class of 1978, current chairperson of the Board of Trustees, Father C Christopher Devron, president, the administration, faculty, and staff, I am pleased to declare the 175th commencement exercises for the Fordham Prep class of 2020 in session. This is a day of celebration and joy. It's also a day to honor our graduates of the historic class of 2020. We gather on Rowan Athletic Field this year under unique circumstances, but nevertheless join together as one community of faith, scholarship, and service. This is a moment that deserves great dignity and attention, and we thank all of you for your cooperation in making this such a special day. Please now stand and join with Mr. Ken Farnham class of 1975, and Elizabeth Farnham in the singing of our national anthem, and remain standing for the benediction, which will be given by Father Stan Okonski, SJ.
be seated. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Ignatius Loyola, the founder of the Society of Jesus, the Jesuits. All right. But we also celebrate another historic occasion, right? the graduation of the Fordham Prep class of 2020. Well, class of 2020, you finally arrived. And we faculty and administrators right, for the past four years came along for the ride. But now we have to stay behind and let you go before us. Because the road ahead belongs more to you than it does to us. So I, let us pray. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Good and gracious God, Father, God of mysteries and miracles, ironies and surprises, what? Miracles, what? Four short years ago, these young men stood as boys before a road that seemed daunting and scary. With many twists and turns, hills and valleys, some had difficult and arduous, rugged, but supported by family, teachers, and friends, right? you moved ahead cautiously, yet confidently. You found that the best of times sometimes was difficult and hard at the beginning. The hardest skills were the ones most to be acquired. And as you went along, you won so many new friends and relationships. Some of these friendships so deep they will last a lifetime. And the best teachers, administrators, and coaches, right, would settle for nothing less than the best you could summon up from yourself. Some of the worst of times then became the best of times. Now, we faculty and administrators right, must pull to the side of that road and let you pass. Hopefully, right, you are discovering that the road right, before you, that you continue on, has a name, Emmaus. Like those two first disciples of Jesus, may you always recognize Jesus in the breaking of the Eucharistic bread so that you may recognize him in others and especially that most challenging person, yourself. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Each year, a member of the graduating class is selected to speak for the class on this occasion. This year, the Senior Awards Committee and the senior class itself has selected McLean F. Farrell. I now call upon McLean to share his reflections on the experience of the class of 2020. Good afternoon, Father Debron, Dr. Petriello, members of the Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, parents, those watching from home, and especially members of the class of 2020. I'd like to begin by thanking the administration for their commitment to making this event happen for us, and the alumni community who supported and inspired us with their thoughtful letters this spring. Over two months ago, I had the privilege to address you virtually as we celebrated the day that would have been our graduation from Fordham Prep. Today, I'm grateful to stand before you in person. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 reads, I've fought the good fight. I've finished the race. I've kept the faith. To me, St. Paul's words to his friend Timothy encapsulate not only our last four years at the prep, but these past few months of our lives. Years and months that were not always easy and which didn't always go as expected, but during which we have constantly strived to move forward in the face of adversity. 
Today, we finally crossed the finish line as brothers, having fought the good fight together. The last time I spoke to you, I said our class would strive for greatness, addressing and conquering the challenges this world would present to us. Already, many of you have proven me right as the class of 2020 has begun to demonstrate just how great it is. In the past months, I've witnessed classmates take tremendous steps as leaders, some of us standing together to demand social justice and societal change, others taking initiative and providing for those who have been afflicted by the coronavirus, including by help keeping the dreams of our younger prep brothers alive by donating time and money to raise funds for those Rams who, because of the present circumstances, may not be able to return to the prep this fall. We've also seen members of our class continue to excel athletically, as Aiden Curry will play for the MLB's Texas Rangers, and Miguel Negrete will compete for the Honduran national track and field team this fall. Our successes have also been accompanied by some heartache, as we recently experienced a great loss of our former classmate, Brandon Hendricks, whose life was taken from us in an act to quote our freshman mentor, Mr. Decinti, of cowardice and callous indifference to the sacredness of every human life. The losses we have faced together as a community serve as reminders to each of us today. Reminders about the fragility of our human lives and reminders to take advantage of each moment we are blessed with on this earth. Reminders that we have a higher purpose to live meaningful lives driven by faith, scholarship, and service. To be honest, giving this speech today is a bit surreal as we are closer now than we were in May to beginning the next chapter of our lives. For all of us, these next few weeks will come with the realization that these are our final days at home, our last moments with our loved ones and with each other before moving on to college. But at the same time, today provides much needed closure to a period of our lives which couldn't be described in any other way than as uncertain. In the last five months, our lives have changed drastically and forever as we've been called to persevere in ways we never could have imagined. 2020 will be a year the world will never forget. That is undeniable. But for the 242 of us graduating today, it will be much more than that. It will be the year from which we go forward together, stronger, smarter, more loving, and more driven than ever before. Because 2020 is the year that forged us into men, men of character, action, and empathy. Men who will take the life-altering lessons of the past five months and use them to fight the good fight for the rest of our lives as men for and with others. Men who will not only become the next generation of leaders in our world, but men who are well-equipped with the tools to take on the challenges this world will present to us and prevail. Despite all the hardship we've experienced this year, these most unusual circumstances have without a doubt taught us a variety of lessons. Lessons in perseverance, sure, but more importantly, personal lessons which will stick with us long after the conclusion of today's ceremony. The class of 2020 will not be defined by this virus and all the hardship it left in its wake, but by how we rose despite it. Touching on the need for our world to continue to move in the direction of positive change, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. In a similar thought, President Theodore Roosevelt uttered the words, the credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena. He who at his finest knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly. These great men from separate time periods speak of the same lessons we've learned this year. Sometimes life will throw you a curveball. Your plans will be derailed, your expectations thwarted, your dreams crushed. But it's how you rise from these defeats and continue to move forward that defines the men we will become. Our experiences at Fordham Prep and with each other have certainly echoed these great words, preparing us to continue pushing forward and persevering for the rest of our lives. To be men of action, men constantly in the arena, battling for what we believe in, moving forward, taking risks, and never settling. May these lessons which we have learned here remain with us as we move into this new and exciting chapter of our lives. May we always maintain a clear view of the unique plan God has for each of us. And may Fordham Prep always remain a place we can all call home. Congratulations and God bless the class of 2020.
Thank you, McLean, for those uh, inspiring words. It gives me the greatest of pleasure to introduce our 2020 graduation speaker to you. His name is Bob Gomprecht, and he is class of 1965 here at Fordham Prep. The last time he was on the stage, other than the two other times this morning, um, he, was, he was running graduation, as he had for a long, long time. So let me tell you a little bit about Bob, and I'm going to take a little unconventional route. Um, always get good advice from Bob's friend and my colleague, Dennis Ahern. And Dennis said, uh, instead of just giving uh, you know, the normal introduction where you tell somebody about the degrees they have and where they were born, he, he gave me this piece of advice. He said, tell the graduates about what this man means to them and how his contributions made their four years even better. So, it is unquestionable that Bob, as principal, brought the prep into the 21st century without abandoning the faith, scholarship, and service traditions which have led us here. Bob reawakened the Jesuit nature of the prep by shaping it in conjunction with the JSEA, which is the Jesuit Secondary Schools Association, he shaped Fordham Prep into a mission-driven organization. Bob created a new hiring procedure whereby being dedicated to the mission of Fordham Prep became an indispensable and crucial component of hiring so that decisions first and foremost would be made to hire teachers who demonstrate a commitment to the mission and the Ignatian charism and identity of this place. On the student formation side, Bob presided over the rewriting of the grad at grad, and he made it specific to Fordham Prep. And this is the basis of what you, members of the class of 2020, have experienced and what your parents have witnessed. Bob added a faculty retreat to the Prep's retreat program and supported the expansion of the Prep student retreat program into the sophomore and junior years the junior year, of course, being our Emmaus program. In addition to mission, Bob knew that academic excellence was at the core of Fordham Prep's life. And as a result, he moved Fordham Prep into membership in the New York State Association of Independent Schools and substantially raised our admission standards. Bob began a curriculum review at Fordham Prep and started the expansion of the visual and performing arts program by making it a graduation requirement. Now, members of the class of 2020, raise your hand if you have ever been to consultation. Well, that was a Bob Gomprecht innovation. He conceived and implemented it for the end of every prep day. How many of you have ever taken an AP course? Well, Bob nearly doubled the number of AP courses at Fordham Prep, and he presided over the introduction of Mandarin to the modern languages curriculum. How many of you have ever rowed crew? I think this is a crew heavy crowd today. <laughs> Bob introduced crew. Who in this group has played rugby? Bob brought it back after it had been dormant for many years. There was no father's club at Fordham Prep until Bob pushed for it and Bob was a driving force in the formation of building bridges the prep organization, which is dedicated to issues of human dignity, respect, and equality for all, especially those who are members of the LGBTQ community. There was no faculty development and supervision program at Fordham Prep until Bob created one. Bob was also the author of the Prep's significant increase in the hiring of female faculty, and he hired Fordham Prep's first female academic administrator. Always on the lookout to the future, Bob shepherded the one-to-one -one device program into what one New York State Association of Independent Schools visitor described as the most successful technology transition to a one-to-one -one program he had ever seen. The hallmark, though, of Bob's impact on Fordham Prep was in the freedom the respect and the love he gave to each student and each faculty person, and they returned it. 
So it is my pleasure uh, to welcome Bob to the stage. Now, those of you who have not met him, you recognize his last name, and that's because his grandson graduated just in the, um, just in the prior ceremony. You're going to hear a little bit about Bob's family's relationship to this place. And so it is my, my privilege and pleasure to introduce to you Bob Gomprecht, class of 1965. Thank you, Chris. <coughs> that sounds like a great obituary. <laughs> um, just saying. I noticed my wife writing it all down. Mr. Paul Brusco, former chair of our board of trustees. Mr. Mario Ciampi, the incoming chair of the board, board members. Father Devron, Dr. Petriello, my former colleagues on the faculty, staff and administration, parents, revered guests, members who are tuning in online, and especially the members of the class of 2020. It's an honor to be invited to give this commencement address. I thank you all. As John Denver sang, it's good to be back home again. Let me begin with a heartfelt shout out to the impressive and historic class of 2020. Your accomplishments in so many areas are fitting for a class that has shepherded Fordham Prep out of one decade and into another and done that while there's a pa pandemic going on. McLean, what a great job. We've got this down now pretty good, right? <laughs> and take this on the road before we're done. <laughs> um, congratulations to you seniors for one more thing. Um, you have set a record that will probably never be beaten at Fordham Prep for the longest senior cut day. <laughs> you should be so proud. Last January, when I started thinking about this, this commencement talk, that was before the pandemic had torn into our lives. We had yet to experience all the suffering and personal pain and death it would bring. The quarantines, the homeschooling, the loss of social interaction, the prom, separation of families from members who were sick, and all too often separation from families who were dying. So I want to acknowledge what a sad and painful way this is for seniors to end their years at Fordham Prep. I thought back to my own senior year. It would have been very different without a prom, <clears throat> without a graduation, signing each other's yearbooks, and all the wonderful things that bring closure to four great years at Fordham Prep. I'm sure it feels like a severe wound that could color your future interactions with the PrEP. But I'm aware that the PrEP and your families and your friends have invented ways to celebrate your graduation. And I hope that you see how proud we all are of each one of you. I do wonder how my own class would have reacted had we been confronted by such profound and frustrating events. My class has always been close. Most of us loved our time at the prep. We learned a lot about ourselves. We made friends and developed respect for one another. We stayed in touch. We came back to reunions in big numbers and renewed friendships. I believe that if my class had experienced a similar upheaval, we would have suffered a wound similar to yours. But I also believe that our ties to each other and our pride in being graduates of Fordham Prep would have inevitably brought us back together at the school. And my prayer is that that happens for each one of you. As a concluding thought about the pandemic, I refer to a sermon that the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. gave at the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church in the year 1959 on Easter Sunday. King recounts 
his trip to the Holy Land. He'd just come back from a visit, and he recalled falling on his knees and weeping during a visit to Calvary, the cross. He observes that Jesus' sacrifice on the cross was something that nobody could demand him to do, making him a man who had the amazing capacity to be obedient to unenforceable obligations. Ben King declared that there are only three types of people in this world. There are the lawless, those who break laws or don't abide by the codes of society. There are the law abiding, whose standards of conduct derive from without, from man-made laws and from so so societal values and, and customs. And he said, that's probably most of us. And then he said, there are those who follow interior codes of conduct, rules that are larger than themselves. These are the people who are obedient to the unenforceable. The people who, in the beautiful words that Shakespeare said about Desdemona, in their goodness, they hold it something of a vice, an evil, not to do more than is required. These are the people who change history and make history. King said they come occasionally. But the pandemic, my friends, I think has revealed that these people are all around us, in emergency rooms and ICUs, cleaning hospitals and subways, in EMS trucks, fire stations, supermarkets, and driving buses, living and working to help people outside their own homes while this pandemic engulfs us. They deserve our deepest thanks, for without them, everything would be worse. Thank them today and every day as best you can. My family has a long association with Fordham. My dad graduated from the prep in 1941. In 1937, he left his apartment at 2603 Briggs Avenue, just up the road, and walked down Fordham Road and came in through the gate by what is now the Metro North Station. And he entered the campus to start his high school career at Fordham Prep. He was a good student. He lived with his parents, my grandparents Clarence and Charlotte Gomprecht, and his grandmother, Sarah Barr, an Irish lass. He was an only child. The family struggled financially as he got older. His dad, my grandfather, managed a theater, a movie theater, up on, the, up on Fordham Road near the concourse. There used to be two of them, almost opposite each other at Fordham Road. And during the Great Depression, my grandfather lost his job and was never able to find work, employment after that. So when my dad was accepted to Fordham Prep, his parents had no money to pay the tuition. So his grandmother, Sarah Barr, who worked for many years as a New York City policewoman, a matron, paid the tuition. And I share this story because I want to point out that my family's four-generation relationship, Matthew, who graduated today, is the fourth generation of the prep, began the way it does for many prep families where a young, talented man gets into Fordham Prep and the family can't quite afford tuition, and so other family members chip in and help make it affordable. I will bet that some of you in this room could tell a similar story. It's common at Fordham Prep. And look what evolved from that generosity of my great-grandmother, Sarah Barr. After my dad, I graduated from the prep. My son, Bob, graduated from the prep in the college. His wife graduated, Paula, from Fordham College. Their son just graduated today. My son, Christopher, went to Fordham Prep and Fordham Law School, where he met his wife, a Fordham Law School graduate. Their oldest son, Luke will be coming into Fordham Prep as a freshman in September. Beyond that, my daughter graduated from Fordham College and Fordham uh, Graduate School. My sister Ellen graduated from Fordham College. And my brother-in-law Jimmy graduated from Fordham Prep. There are two more family members that I want to mention, although they did not go to Fordham. But by virtue of their support over the years, 
are truly members of our Fordham family. My mom, Kathleen, who is now the matriarch of our family, as loving and sharp and supportive and feisty as ever in her 90s, and I'm gonna catch hell for mentioning her age, and my bride, Alana, who has been my companion, my counselor, my truest friend and my love, now for over 50 years. We got married at 14. That's an incredible legacy. So on behalf of my family, I want to thank Sarah Barr, who's up there watching. And I want to thank all the unrecognized family and friends who've helped make Fordham Prep education possible over many years for so many deserving young men. So some final thoughts for you to take with you, gentlemen, as you leave. And I think back to my relationships with alumni to kind of come up with these. I've met a lot of alums over the years. In fact, while I was here as a teacher or an administrator, 10,000 young men passed through Fordham Prep. And about half of them have my name on their diploma. Another 187 happened to be my classmates. So I asked myself, what impresses me about them? And I'll tell a story to get the first one going. My next door neighbor is a New York City fireman. He's a great guy. He did not go to Fordham. He went to another Catholic high school in the Bronx, but his younger brother went to Fordham Prep. And this guy holds Fordham Prep in very high esteem. And sometimes he'd come home from the firehouse and he'd say, you know, we got a new guy in, got talking to him. He went to Fordham Prep. And this guy would say to me, why would anybody go to Fordham Prep and then work as a fireman? It, it, he couldn't make that compute. So after a while, I think I did get through to him. And my message was, in Jesuit education, and particularly at Fordham Prep, service to others is so central to what we do. I think he finally got it, and I want to say I'm especially proud of every graduate who works in service to others, and that certainly includes firemen and policemen. And I want each one of you to make a contribution in terms of service as you go along. If you can make your living serving others, that's awesome. And if you can't, leave some room to do service in your community or some other way. Make service an important part of your life. So what else impresses me? The habit of reflection. And you have just spent four years practicing the art of reflection. In the Jesuit world, the instrument that the founder of the Jesuits, Ignatius, created for reflection is called the Examine. And you've probably done hundreds of them over your four years here. And it's a way of looking back at a period of time, a day, a week, or whatever, and Ignatius' words were, what gave you consolation and what gave you desolation? Today we would translate it more in terms of what have you done that brought you closer to God and what have you done that moved you away from God? Where is God alive in your life? You can use this habit of reflection for other things. You can use it to consider relationships with family and friends, um, your colleagues, but whatever, make reflection an important part of your life. What else are you bringing with you as you leave Fordham Prep? We assume you're competent students. But more than that, we want you to love yourselves for the many gifts that you have been given. To extend yourselves in loving ways to others. To think for yourself. To not allow others to manipulate you to choose not to ma manipulate others for your own gain, to not be dog-eat-dog -dog competitive, but rather be competent, cooperative, decisive young men who compete with a moral sense. We want you every day to solve your own problems. Make these traits an important part of your life. We do not know what the future holds, but we do know it involves change. It will require us to step out of our comfort zones because there's a greater need, a greater challenge, a greater glory of God that draws us, in fact, compels us to do this. Even now, we see so much injustice 
so much prejudice, so much doubt and division, we are being called to step out more courageously. The world around us changes at a more rapid rate. And if our view of the world is not evolving, then it's not alive and it will shortly become irrelevant. So make continued growth a part of your life. There's an old Broadway show called The Chorus Line. It's the story of the tryouts for a Broadway play. The tryouts are for the chorus line. Those are not the stars, those are the people behind the stars who dance and sing. Over the course of these tryouts, which the play uh, follows, these people get very close and supportive of each other. Towards the end of the tryouts, one of them, his name is Paul, and he's already been given a role in the play. He falls and does tremendous damage to his knee during a rehearsal. He probably will never dance again. He's carried off to the hospital and all the remaining that are trying out are literally standing there in disbelief, realizing that their careers could come to an end in an instant. After some discussion, they agree that they dance and they sing because they love it. And whatever happens to them, they will be free of regret. And they express that feeling in a song. And the words of that song have often guided me as I've considered the next steps in my own life. I would wonder when the direction that I chose was complete, would I be able to look back and say, yeah, I kind of lived the words of that song. Five years ago, I met with the prep faculty and staff to let them know I was leaving Fordham Prep. But I wanted them to understand how strong my feelings were for them and for the school. And I concluded that presentation with the words from the song. And that's how I want to conclude this address. And I hope the words resonate with you seniors as you look back at your years at the prep and embark on the next phase of your life's journey. And if they don't quite resonate, maybe with a little distance and a little time, you'll look back at the prep and find, in fact, these words do represent what you experienced here. That song is what I did for love. Kiss today goodbye, the sweetness and the sorrow. Wish me luck, the same to you, but I can't regret what I did for love. Look, my eyes are dry, the gift was ours to borrow. It's as if we always knew, and I won't forget what I did for love. Gone, love is never gone. As we travel on, love is what we'll remember. So kiss today goodbye and point me towards tomorrow. We did what we had to do. Won't regret, can't forget what I did for love. Gentlemen, in the words of St. Ignatius, whose feast day we celebrate today, your job is to go out and set the world on fire. God bless you all. Thank you, Bob. In my office, I have one of the 5,000 diplomas that Mr. Gomprecht signed during his tenure as principal. And it's with great humility that I sit in his office during my years as principal uh, to continue his legacy uh, and do so with gratitude for uh, his tenure as principal as being the principal who formed me as a student and a graduate of, of Fordham Prep. Thank you. Father President, on the recommendation of the faculty of Fordham Preparatory School, I am pleased to present to you for diplomas of graduation the following students who have successfully completed the prescribed course of studies at Fordham Preparatory School. On the recommendation of the faculty and by the vote of the Board of Trustees represented on this dais by Thomas Huvain, Vice Chairman, Class of 1984, I am pleased to award diplomas of graduation to the Class of 2020. 
A professional photographer will take a photograph of each graduate as he receives his diploma. The sample picture will be sent to your home or email address. We ask your cooperation by not interfering with the photographer, the graduates, or the view of our parents and guests gathered today. I would ask PREP alumni and those associated with Fordham PREP or Fordham University who are presenting diplomas to come up with your graduate and accompany him onto the stage. Because we didn't have a graduation rehearsal, I now ask all graduates in the first row to please stand and to follow each other to the right and line up with Mr. Broussard and keep some distance between you as I call you up for your diplomas. Henry Daniel Augustus Irwin. James Wigmore Irwin. Ajani A. Isles. Justin Alexander Jordanes. Gavin Patrick Joyce. Imran Raza Khan. Adib Asan Khandakar. Will the second row of graduates please stand and follow each other to your right. Timothy J. Kiley. Edward F. Kinnearum. Joseph A. Kobeck II. Garen P. Corian. Alexander J. Costco. Peter O'Malley Kolowick, not present. <laughs> Mr. John Lavecchia, class of 1962, is unable to present the diploma to his grandson, Giovanni V. Lavecchia. <laughs> Joshua Christian Ladero. Stefano Luca La Sala. Justin M. Lazu. Mrs. Camille Banks Lee, member of the Fordham Prep Board of Trustees, will present the diploma to her son, Langston C. Lee. William Ahern Lefevre. Sean Joseph Lay. Owen Thomas Lafredo. Will the graduates in our third row please rise and line up to your right. Edwin Isidro Lopez.
Gustavo Emilio Lopez. Christopher Lumai. John H. London. Daniel J. Mabes. Thomas Paul Madden. Andres Madrigal. Robert T. McGuck. Max Robert Mahoney. Ismael G. Malave. Maximus J. Maldonado. Jace Mitchell Malloy. Johan X. Marco Tulio, not present. Will the remaining graduates in our fourth row please rise and line up to your right? Gonzalo A. Marroquin Argueta. Andre E. Martinez. Andrew Charles Marks. Michael E. McCrory. John C. McDermott. Patrick O. McDermott. James F. McGinn. Aiden Anthony McHale. <laughs> Finian P. McHale. <laughs> Brett P. McLaughlin. Mr. William McLaughlin, class of 1987, will present the diploma to his son, Michael Mannix McLaughlin. <laughs> Matthew J. McNally. Victor B. Medina. Daniel Mejia. And Michael M. Michelli. Ladies and gentlemen, the Fordham Prep Class of 2020. Congratulations, gentlemen.
You know, uh, Bob spoke very in, uh, inspiring words from Martin Luther King's sermon, and he spoke about that third class of person, the one who transcends himself or herself and is committed to a higher power and whom that higher power inspires to do the right thing in an interior way. And we have just such a group assembled today around us, though in a little smaller numbers. Um, but I think uh, as, we, as we read and reflect and understand the kind of sacrifice that they will be making once September rolls around, uh, we have to give them our appreciation and express our gratitude to them, and that is our faculty. Thank you. <laughs> you class of 2020, I, I admire you as well because all those things that you, that you gave up as a part of the normal Fordham Prep experience in, in May and April, uh, you did so so that others could be healthy and others could actually live. And that is a tribute to, to your commitment to become men for others. And I'm grateful for that example. There uh, is another important group that we have to recognize this afternoon. Uh, and we didn't rehearse this, but you have diplomas, so I expect that you're going to know what to do, gentlemen. Um, so uh, if you had an opportunity, you would have requested one to publicly thank your parents for all they have done for you. So I invite you now to do that. <laughs> Members of the class of 2020, thank you for four fantastic years. Fordham Prep will always be a home for you. Please remain engaged with us. You have no, now joined an exceptional group, the Fordham Prep alumni body. Your accomplishments in college and beyond, and especially your dedication to service, which Mr. Gomprecht also spoke about. That dedication and your accomplishments will enhance the already illustrious history of our alumni. God bless you and thank you. Everyone is kindly asked to stand and join in the singing of the alma mater. The words may be found in the back of your graduation program.
Ladies and gentlemen, I declare the third session of the 175th commencement of Fordham Preparatory School adjourned. Before we join in the singing of the ram, I request that at the end of the song, if everybody can leave this area and move to the backfield, take some pictures for a few moments, and we'll help our staff prepare for the next session. Gentlemen, the ram.
good afternoon. We invite everyone to make their way into the tent area as we will beginning uh, we will be beginning our ceremony in just a few minutes. So if you're able to move into the tent area and find your seats, that would be great. Thank you. Good afternoon and welcome. On behalf of Mr. Paul Brusco, class of 1982, past chairperson of the Board of Trustees, 
Mr. Mario Ciampi, class of 1978, current chairperson of the Board of Trustees. Father Christopher Devron, president, the administration, faculty, and staff. I am pleased to declare the 175th commencement exercises for the Fordham Prep class of 2020 in session. This is a day of celebration and joy. It is also a day to honor our graduates of the historic class of 2020. We gather on Rowan Athletic Field this year under unique circumstances, but nevertheless join together as one community of faith, scholarship, and service. This is a moment that deserves great dignity and attention, and we thank all of you for your cooperation in making today so special. Please stand and join with Mr. Ken Farnham, class of 1975, and Elizabeth Farnham in singing our national anthem and remain standing for the benediction which will be offered by Father Stan Okonski, SJ. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Ignatius Loyola, the founder of the Society of Jesus, the Jesuits. Right? But we also celebrate another historic occasion, the graduation of the Fordham Prep class of 2020. Well, class of 2020, you've arrived. Right? And we faculty and administrators right, for the last four years came along for the ride. But now we have to stay behind right, so that uh, you can go ahead. Because the road ahead belongs more to you than it does to us. But know that our love and our prayers go with you wherever you go. So uh, let us pray. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Good and gracious God, Father, right? you are certainly a God of mysteries and miracles, ironies and surprises. Right? A few short years ago, these young men stood as boys before a road that seemed daunting and scary, with many twists and turns, hills and valleys. Right? Some had easy, others quite rugged and arduous. Supported, though, by family, teachers, and friends, you moved ahead cautiously, yet confidently. You found right, that the best knowledge right, was often acquired painfully, right, but that was all the more satisfying. Your greatest triumphs won, were often won, only by sacrifice and dedication. Each milestone brought you new friendships, some of which are so deep they will last a lifetime. 
and the best teachers, administrators, coaches, right, refuse to allow you to settle for anything less than bringing out the best in yourselves. Right? We faculty and administrators right, pull aside of the road to let you pass by right, beyond us. Hopefully, you discovered along the way that this road had a name, Emmaus. Like those two first disciples of Jesus, may you always recognize Jesus in the breaking of the Eucharistic bread, that you may recognize him in others, and especially that most challenging person, yourself. Amen. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Each year, a member of the graduating class is selected to speak for the class on this occasion. This year, the Senior Awards Committee and the senior class itself has selected McLean F. Farrell. I now call upon McLean to share his reflections on the experience of the class of 2020. Good afternoon, Father Devron, Dr. Petriello, members of the Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, parents, family, those watching from home, and especially the members of the class of 2020. I'd like to begin by thanking the administration for their commitment to making this event happen for us, and the alumni community who supported and inspired us with their thoughtful letters this spring. Over two months ago, I had the privilege to address you virtually as we celebrated the day that would have been our graduation from Fordham Prep. Today, I'm grateful to stand before you in person. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 reads, I've fought the good fight. I've finished the race. I've kept the faith. To me, St. Paul's words to his friend Timothy encapsulate not only our last four years at the prep, but these past few months of our lives. Years and months that were not always easy and didn't always go as expected, but during which we have never stopped continuing to push forward in the face of adversity. Today, we finally cross the finish line as brothers, having fought the good fight together. The last time I spoke to you, I said our class would strive for greatness, addressing, addressing and conquering the many challenges our world would present to us. Already, many of you have proven me right as the class of 2020 has begun to demonstrate just how great it is. Since May, I've witnessed classmates take tremendous steps as leaders, some of us standing together and demanding social justice and societal change, others taking initiative and providing for those who've been afflicted by the coronavirus, including by helping keep the dreams of our younger prep brothers alive, those who, because of the present circumstances, may not be able to return to the prep this fall. We've also seen members of our class continue to excel athletically, as Aiden Curry will play for the MLB's Texas Rangers and Miguel Negrete will compete for the Honduran national track and field team this fall. Our successes have also been accompanied by some heartache, as we recently experienced a great loss of our former classmate, Brandon Hendricks, who to quote our freshman mentor, Mr. Distinti's, life was taken in an act of coward, cowardice and callous indifference to the sacredness of every human life. The losses we've faced together as a community serve as reminders to each of us today. Reminders about the fragility of our human existence and reminders that we are to take advantage of each moment we are blessed with on this earth. Reminders that we have a higher purpose to live meaningful lives driven by faith, scholarship, and service. To be honest, giving this speech today is a bit surreal since we are closer now than we were in May to beginning the next chapter of our lives. For most of us, the next few days and weeks will come with the realization that these are our final days at home our last moments with our loved ones and with each other before moving on to college. But at the same time, today provides much needed closure to a period of our lives which couldn't be described in any other way than as uncertain. In the last five months, our lives have changed drastically and forever as we've been called to persevere in ways we never could have imagined. 2020 will be a year the world will never forget. That is for certain. But for the 242 of us graduating today, it will be much more than that. It will be the year from which we go forward together, stronger, smarter, more loving, and more driven than ever before. 
Because 2020 is the year that forged us into men. Men of character, action, and empathy. Men who will take the life-altering lessons these past five months have ta taught us and use them to fight the good fight for the rest of our lives as men for and with others. Men who will not only become the next generation of leaders in our world, but men who are well-equipped with the tools to take on the many challenges this world will present to us and prevail. Despite all the hardship we've experienced this year, these most unusual circumstances have without a doubt taught us a variety of lessons. Lessons of perseverance, sure, but more importantly, personal lessons which will stick with us long after the conclusion of today's ceremony. The class of 2020 will not be defined by what we lost to this virus and all the hardship which is left in its wake, but by how we rose despite it. Touching on the need for our world to continue to move in the direction of positive change, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. In a similar thought, President Theodore Roosevelt uttered the words, the credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena. He who at his best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly. These great men from separate time periods speak of the same lessons we've learned this year. Sometimes life will throw you a curveball. Your plans will be derailed, your expectations thwarted, your dreams crushed. But it's how we rise from these defeats and continue to move forward that defines the men we will become. Our experiences at Fordham Prep and with each other have certainly echoed these great words, preparing us to continue pushing forward and persevering for the rest of our lives. To be men of action, men constantly in the arena, battling for what we believe in, moving forward, taking risks, and never settling. May these lessons which we have learned here remain with us as we move into this new and exciting chapter of our lives. May we always maintain a clear view of the unique plan God has for each of us. And may Fordham Prep always remain a place we can call home. Congratulations, and may God bless the class of 2020. Thank you, McLean, for those inspiring words. It gives me the greatest of pleasure to introduce our graduation speaker, Bob Gomprecht, class of 1965. The last time he was on this stage, uh, before the two other times or three other times today, um, Bob was the principal of Fordham Prep, and he was running graduation, as he had for a long, long time. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about Bob, but I'd like to uh, make my introduction a little bit unconventional. You see, usually when people introduce graduation speakers, they tell you about their origins and their diplomas and their professional accomplishments. Um, but to the class of 2020, I want to tell you a little bit about how this man made a difference in your life, even though you may have never met him. It's unquestionable that Mr. Gomprecht brought the prep into the 21st century without abandoning the faith, scholarship, and service traditions which led us here. He reawakened the Jesuit nature of Fordham Prep by shaping it in conjunction with the Jesuit Secondary, Secondary Schools Association into a mission-driven organization. Bob created a new hiring procedure where being dedicated to the mission of Fordham Prep became a crucial, in fact, an indispensable component of hiring decisions so that first and foremost, Teachers were hired because they could demonstrate a commitment to the Jesuit mission and the Ignatian character. On the student formation level, Bob presided over the rewriting of the grad at grad to make it specific for Fordham Prep. And this, gentlemen, is what you have experienced over these four years, and your parents have come to know and love about this experience. Bob was devoted to our faculty, and he added a faculty retreat to the PREPS retreat program. He supported the expansion of the PREPS student retreat program to include the sophomore and junior, yes, the Emmaus years. In addition to our mission, Bob knew that academics and excellence in academics is at the core of the PREPS life. 
As a result, he moved Fordham Prep into membership into the New York State Association of Independent Schools, and he substantially raised the admission standards to Fordham Prep. Bob began the curriculum review, and he started the expansion of the visual and performing arts program and made it a graduation requirement. Now, how many of you members of the class of 2020 have ever gone to consultation? Raise your hand. This was Bob's idea. He conceived and implemented it at the end of every prep day. How many of you have taken an AP course? Raise your hand. So Bob nearly doubled the number of AP courses at the prep, and he presided over the introduction of Mandarin to the modern language curriculum. Who in this group has rowed as part of the, the crew program? Raise your hand. Well, Bob introduced that program. Who played rugby here? Anyone? Do we have any rugby players? Yes, at least one I see. Well, that program had been dormant for many years, and Bob brought it back. There was no father's club at Fordham Prep until Bob pushed for it. And Bob was a driving force in the formation of Building Bridges, the prep organization committed to human dignity, respect, and equality for all, especially our LGBTQ members of, our, of that community here. There was no faculty development and supervision program at Fordham Prep until Bob created one. Bob was also the author of the prep's significant increase in the hiring of female faculty, and he hired the prep's first female academic administrator. Bob was always on the lookout for how to make Fordham Prep better in the future. And so Bob shepherded the one-to-one -one device program into the prep, and in fact, uh, an official with the New York State Association of Independent Schools would describe this as the most successful techno technological transition to one-to-one -one he had ever seen at any school. But perhaps the hallmark of Bob's impact on the prep was in the freedom, the respect, and the love he gave to each student and all of his faculty and which they returned. So uh, you may n have never met Mr. Gomprecht, but you may recognize his last name. That's because his grandson is a member of your class. Uh, he'll tell you a little bit about his family tree here at Fordham when he speaks to you. But at this time, let's give a very warm welcome to Mr. Bob Gomprecht, class of 1965. If any of you would like to have McLean and myself, after you hear me, come to your home and do this again, we're taking this on the road, right? I'm going to make a few bucks out of this. Another great job. Mr. Mario Ciampi, the incoming chair of the Board of Trustees, Mr. Paul Brusco, the outgoing chair, other members of the Board of Trustees, Father Deverin. Dr. Petriello, my former colleagues and faculty and staff at the prep, revered guests, those of you who are tuned in, and particularly the members of the class of 2020. It's an honor to be invited to give this commencement talk. I thank you all, and as John Denver sang, it's good to be back home again. Let me begin with a heartfelt shout out to the impressive, historic Fordham Prep class of 2020. There's something about those numbers, 2020, which just, just looks perfect. It's fitting that such a talented class would shepherd Fordham Prep out of one decade and into another and do it while a pandemic was going on. I want to congratulate you seniors for setting a record that will probably never be broken at Fordham Prep for the longest senior cut day in the history of the school. <laughs> Each one of you should be so proud. Last January, when I started thinking about what to say here, before the pandemic tore into our lives, 
We had yet to experience all the suffering, personal pain, and death that it would bring. The quarantines, the homeschooling, the loss of social interaction, for example, proms, separation of families from loved ones who are sick, and all too often separation from those loved ones while they died. So I want to kind of acknowledge what a sad and painful way this is for you, seniors, to end four years at the prep. I thought back to my own senior year. It would have been so very difficult without a prom, a formal graduation, signing each other's yearbooks, and all the wonderful things that bring closure to four great years at Fordham. I'm sure it feels like a severe wound that could color your future interactions with the prep. But I'm also aware that the prep and your family and your friends have invented many ways to celebrate your graduation. And I hope you can all see just how proud we are of each one of you. I do wonder how my own class would have reacted had we been confronted by such profound and frustrating events. My class was always a close class. Most of us loved our time at the prep. We learned a lot about ourselves. We made friends and developed a respect for one another. We stayed in touch. We came to reunions in large numbers, renewed friendships. I believe that if my class had experienced a similar upheaval, that we would have suffered a wound similar to yours. But I also believe that our ties to each other and our pride in being graduates of Fordham Prep would have inevitably brought us back together at the prep. My prayer is that that happens for you. As a concluding thought about the pandemic, really another kind of observation, I refer to a sermon by the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. that he gave at the uh, Dexter Avenue Baptist Church in Montgomery, Alabama in 1959 on Easter Sunday. The first time I read this many years ago, it, it struck a chord with me. King recounts his visit to the Holy Land. He had just come back from the Holy Land, and he recalled while he was there falling on his knees and weeping during a visit to Calvary, where the cross was located. And in the sermon, he observed that Jesus' sacrifice on the cross was something that no one could demand him to do, making him, making Jesus, a man who had the amazing capacity to be obedient to unenforceable obligations. Then King declared that there are but three types of people in this world. There are the lawless who break laws and don't abide by the codes of society. There are the law abiding, those whose standards of conduct derive from without, from man-made laws and from societal values and customs. And he said, that's probably most of us. And then he said, there are those who follow interior codes of conduct, rules that are larger than themselves. These are people who are obedient to the unenforceable. The people who, in the beautiful words of Shakespeare, as he talked about Desdemona, said in their goodness, they hold it something of a vice, of an evil, not to do more than is required. These are the people who change history. These are the people who make history. King said they come along occasionally. But this pandemic, my friends, has revealed that in fact, these people are all around us, in emergency rooms and ICUs, cleaning hospitals and subways, in EMS trucks and fire stations, supermarkets and driving buses, living and working to help people outside their own homes despite the pandemic which engulfs us. And they deserve our deepest thanks, for without them, things would be much worse. So thank them every day, today and every day as best you can. 
My family's had a long association with Fordham Prep. My dad graduated from the school in 1941. In 1937, he left his apartment at 2603 Briggs Avenue, where I actually lived later on when he got married and began to have kids. And he walked down Fordham Road, just a few blocks, to the entrance by the Metro North Railroad Station and entered the campus through that gate and began his high school career at Fordham Prep. He was a good student. He lived with his parents, Charlotte and Clarence Gomprecht, my grandparents, and with his grandmother, Sarah Barr. Sarah Barr was a wonderful Irish woman. He was an only child. And the family struggled financially. My grandfather managed the movie theater on Fordham Road up near the concourse. There were two at one time on opposite sides of Fordham Road. And during the Great Depression, he lost his job and was never able to find employment after that. So when my dad was accepted to Fordham Prep, there was no money to pay tuition. So his grandmother, Sarah Barr, who worked for many years, 22 years as a New York City policewoman, they were called matrons at the time, paid his tuition. And I share this point to because my family's four generation relationship with Fordham Prep began, it begins for so many prep students. A smart, talented young man is accepted to the prep. His parents are unable to afford the tuition, so family members band together and help cover the cost. I'm sure that in this room, some of you probably have stories that are similar. And I want to have a look for a moment at what evolved from this generosity of my great-grandmother, Sarah Barr. After my dad, I graduated from the prep, the college, and the graduate school. My son, Bob, graduated from the prep and the college. His wife, Paula, graduated from Fordham College. Their son, Matt, just graduates with you guys from Fordham Prep. My son Chris graduated from Fordham Prep and Fordham Law School. Fordham Law School, he met his wife, Diana, and their oldest son, Luke, will be entering Fordham Prep in September as a freshman. Beyond that, my daughter went to Fordham College and Fordham Law School. My sister Ellen graduated from Fordham College, and my brother-in-law, Jimmy Heafy, graduated from the Prep. There are two more family members who did not attend Fordham, but I count them as part of the Fordham family by virtue of their support over many years and are truly members of that Fordham family. My mom, Kathleen, is the matriarch of our family, as loving and sharp and supportive and feisty in her 90s as she ever was. And I'm gonna catch hell for saying that publicly. She's probably looking in on the TV. And my bride, Alana, who has been my companion, my counselor, my truest friend, and my love for now more than 50 years. That's an incredible legacy. And on behalf of my family, I want to thank Sarah Barr for getting that all started. She's up there watching. And thanks to all the unrecognized family and friends who, like Sarah Barr, have helped make Fordham Prep Education possible over the years for so many deserving and men. So some final thoughts for you to take as you leave the prep. And I, I, I thought about the many alumni I've gotten to know to figure out what I want, wanted to say here. What about them impresses me? Now I know a lot of alums. 10,000 young men went through Fordham Prep while I taught and administrated here. And half of them, about 5,000, have my name on their diploma and another 187 are out there who were classmates of mine at Fordham Prep. So I want to relate a conversation I had with my, my uh, neighbor who did not go to Fordham Prep, went to another Catholic high school in the Bronx. He's a New York City fireman, great guy, and he has a younger brother who went to Fordham Prep. And this guy has, holds Fordham Prep in high esteem because what his brother experienced at the Prep. And occasionally we'd be talking and he'd say, you know, a new guy came into the firehouse and we get talking and he went to Fordham Prep. 
And you say, I can't understand why anybody would go to Fordham Prep and become a fireman. It, it just did not compute for him. So it took a while, but I think I finally got across to him that service to others is such a central part of Jesuit education and is alive and well at Fordham Prep. And I can't think of a better way to live out service to others than being a fireman or a policeman. So I want to tell you, I am proud of every graduate who does service. If you are able to work in a field where you serve others, that's awesome. But even if you're not, leave room to do some service, perhaps in your own community. Make service an important part of your life. Another thing that impresses me when I meet our alums is their sense of reflection. They often are very thoughtful. And you've been spending, you spent four years here practicing the art of reflection. You use the Jesuit instrument that Ignatius created called the examine. And it's a chance to look back at a period of time and see what happened that gave you consolation or created desolation. Better translated today into look back and see what happened in your life where God was involved and what brought you closer to God and what moved you away from God. And it's a great way to apply that to, it's a great way to reflect on your families, your friends, and even your colleagues. But however you do it, make reflection an important part of your life. Now what else are you bringing from Fordham Prep as you move on? You're bringing the fact that you're all good students, you're all competent. But more than that, we want you to love yourselves for the many gifts you've been given. To extend yourselves in loving ways to others. To think for yourself. To not allow others to manipulate you. To choose not to manipulate others for your own gain. To not be doggy dog competitive, but rather competent, cooperative, decisive young men who compete with a moral sense. We want you every day to solve your own problems. Make these traits an important part of your life. We do not know what the future holds, but we do know that it involves change. It will require us to step out of our comfort zones because there is a greater need, a greater challenge, a great greater glory of God that draws us, even compels us to do that. Even now, we see so much injustice, so much prejudice, so much doubt and division. We are being called to step out more courageously as the world around us changes more and more rapidly. And if our view of the world is not evolving, then it is not alive and it will become irrelevant. Make continued growth an important part of your job, of your life. There's an old Broadway show called A Chorus Line. It's the story of tryouts for a chorus line. Those are the folks who are not the stars, but they're behind the stars. They sing and they dance and they're very talented. They hope to become stars. But this is what they're trying out for and the play goes through the tryouts. As that happens, they all become close and supportive of each other. Towards the end of the play, one actor who has already been given a part falls and badly injures a knee during a rehearsal. He will never dance again. He's carried out to the hospital. And all those left behind kind of stand in disbelief realizing that their careers could also come to an end in an instant. After some discussion, they agree that dancing and singing is something they do because they love it. And whatever happens to them, they will be free of regret. And they express that feeling in a song. The words of this song have often guided me as I considered next steps in my life. I would wonder when the direction I chose was complete if I would be able to look back and feel that the words of this song describe my experience. 
Five years ago, I met with the prep faculty and staff to announce that I was leaving the prep. But I wanted my colleagues to understand how much they meant to me and how much the school meant to me. So I concluded that meeting with the words of this song, and it's how I want to conclude this address. And I hope these words resonate with you as you look back at your years at the prep and embark on the next phase of your life's journey. And if for some reason they don't quite resonate, I hope that with the passing of some time and some distance that you'll back, look back and say, yeah, that, that's how I feel. That song is called What I Did for Love. Kiss today goodbye, the sweetness and the sorrow. Wish me luck, the same to you, but I can't regret what I did for love. Look, my eyes are dry. The gift was ours to borrow. It's as if we always knew, and I won't forget what I did for love. Gone, love is never gone. As we travel on, love's what we'll remember. So kiss today goodbye and point me toward tomorrow. We did what we had to do, won't forget, can't regret what I did for love. Gentlemen, in the words of St. Ignatius, whose feast day we celebrate today, your job is to go forth and set the world on fire. God bless you all. Thank you, Bob, for your beautiful words. Proudly displayed in my office, I have one of the 5,000 diplomas that Mr. Gomprecht signed during his years at, at Fordham Prep. And it's a, it's a privilege and a blessing to be able to carry on his work and his legacy through the leadership of the principal's office in gratitude for his leadership that helped form me when I was sitting where all of you are as a student and graduate of Fordham Prep. Father President, on the recommendation of the faculty of Fordham Preparatory School, I am pleased to present to you for diplomas of graduation the following students who have successfully completed the prescribed course of studies at Fordham Preparatory School. On the recommendation of the faculty and by a vote of the Board of Trustees, which took place earlier this summer, and uh, the board uh, today is, is represented by Mr. Thomas Huvain, Vice Chairman, Class of 1984. I am pleased to award diplomas of graduation to the Class of 2020. A professional photographer will take a photograph of each graduate as he receives his diploma. The sample picture will be sent to your home or email address. We ask your cooperation by not interfering with the photographer or the graduates or the view of all of our parents and guests in attendance today. I would also ask PrEP alumni and those associated with Fordham PrEP and Fordham University who are presenting diplomas to come up with your graduate and accompany him onto the stage. Gentlemen, I know we didn't have a chance for a graduation rehearsal, so I'll give you some cues in the next few minutes. If all of our graduates in the first row can stand up, and move to your right and line up with Mr. Broussard and other staff. Thank you. Filippo E. Minella. <laughs> Liam C. Minnick. James K. Mitchell. Peter Rene Monaco. Liam Andrew Moran. Justin Thomas Morrissey.
Graham D. Mullen. James R. Murphy. Robert R. Murphy. Rowan Shepard Murray, Murphy, not present. Will the gentleman in the second row please stand and line up to your right. Mr. James E. Murray, class of 1985, will present the diploma to his son, Owen J. Murray. Miguel Negrete. <laughs> Mr. Patrick O'Brien, class of 1987, will present the diploma to his son, Patrick J. O'Brien IV. Daniel J. O'Burn. Charles Grenfell O'Connor. Samuel K. O'Connor. Connor J. O'Driscoll. John F. O'Shea. <laughs> Mrs. Marianne O'Shea of Fordham University will be presenting the diploma to her son, Liam Michael O'Shea. our graduates in the third row, please rise and line up to your right. Stephen Ogando Rodriguez. Henry J. Oliarzik. Melvin Ortiz. Mark O. Osime. Jack Otero III. Thomas Michael Pace. Luke Atticus Padian. Ernest N. Patty. Jackson Paul Pedrazzi. Xavier Pena. Thomas J. Petty. Thomas, Francesco Pizza, not present. <laughs> C.J. Plantamoli. <laughs> Devin L. Pons, not present. Andrew Bosworth Powers, not present. 
Esteban D. Quinones. Shoaib S. Rakanji. Frederick O'Connor Randall. Harry Gorman Randall. Would all of our graduates in the last row please rise and move to your right. Chris J. Reyes Arias. Juan S. Reyes Lima. Jonas Alexander Reyes. Jansen Burnett Ria. William Oscar Rice. Gabriel P. Royano. Ashton N. Rodriguez. Jaden Matthew Rodriguez. And Andrew Rondinelli. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Fordham Prep's Class of 2020. Congratulations, gentlemen. Concluding the ceremony without recognizing the two groups of people I'd like to call out now would uh, certainly something would be wrong if we didn't do that. So um, first of all, uh, Mr. Gomprecht in his, in his beautiful remarks spoke about those three types of persons in King's sermon. And he said about that third type of person, this is someone who transcends himself or herself and commits to something larger than just the law, that there's something inside, internal, which drives that person to do good and to do right. And certainly we've been reading for the past weeks about teachers and about what they face in the future. Uh, Mr. Gomprecht also spoke about first responders, and I know we have some among us, those doctors and, and nurses, but I would like to... Um, I would like us right now to recognize our faculty who are here in our midst, to thank them not only for four terrific years that you have had, but also for the commitment that they're about to embark on in September. Let's give it up for our faculty. I would be remiss if I didn't call out Mr. Jack Foley, class of 1963, who can't be with us today, but uh, he has retired and after many years of illustrious service to Fordham Prep. Uh, but there's another group uh, who need to be recognized, and uh, we didn't rehearse this either, but since you already have your diploma from Fordham Prep, I trust that you know what the right thing to do is upon your cue, gentlemen. So, members of the class of 2020, um, if you had an opportunity, you would have requested one to thank your parents for all they have done for you. I give you that opportunity right now.
Members of the class of 2020, uh, Mr. Gomprex spoke about the many sacrifices that you made toward the end of your time at Fordham Prep, no prom. I won't go through the whole litany of all the things that you did give up, but they were significant. Um, as you look back on those experiences that are foregone, my hope is that you would remember what that sacrifice meant to your families, to your neighbors, and to this city and our community. Because you gave up those things, you helped other people remain healthy, and you helped them live. So you have my admiration as well as the admiration of all the faculty and the administration. Fordham Prep will always be a home for you in the future. Please stay engaged. The, uh, particularly the uh, development office would want me to say stay engaged. <laughs> you have now joined an exceptional group, the Fordham Prep alumni body. Your accomplishments in college and beyond, and particularly your commitment, the way you demonstrate service to your neighbor will enhance the history of this illustrious alumni body. Thank you, and God bless you. Everyone is kindly asked to stand and join in the singing of the alma mater. The words may be found in the back of your graduation program. Ladies and gentlemen, I declare the fourth session of the 175th commencement of Fordham Preparatory School adjourned. Before we conclude with the singing of the Ram, I would just invite all of our graduates and guests when the song is done to move to the backfield, take a few moments for family photos, and that will help our staff greatly set up this area for our next and final session. Gentlemen, the Ram.
Good afternoon and welcome. On behalf of Mr. Paul Brusco, class of 1982, past chairperson of the Board of Trustees, Mr. Mario Ciampi, class of 1978, current chairperson of the Board of Trustees, Father Christopher Devron, president, the administration, faculty, and staff. I am pleased to declare the 175th commencement exercises for the Fordham Prep class of 2020 in session. This is a day of celebration and joy. It's also a day to honor our graduates of the historic class of 2020. We gather on Rowan Athletic Field this year under unique circumstances, but nevertheless join together as one community of faith, scholarship, and service. This is a moment that deserves great dignity and attention, and we thank you for your cooperation in making today so special. Please stand and join with Mr. Ken Farnham, class of 1975, and Elizabeth Farnham in singing our national anthem, and then remain standing for the benediction which will be offered by Father Stanley Okonski of the Society of Jesus. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Ignatius Loyola, founder of the Society of Jesus, the Jesuits. But we also celebrate uh, another historic occasion, the graduation of the Fordham Prep class of 2020. Well, class of 2020, okay, you've arrived. And we, faculty and administrators, hi, for the past four years, came along with you for the ride. But now, we have to stay behind right, and let you go ahead of us. Because the future belongs more to you than it does to us. But now, and know that our love and our prayers go with you wherever you go. So let us offer our prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Good and gracious God, a Father, you are certainly a God of mysteries and miracles, ironies and surprises. Right? A short four years ago, these young men right, stood before us as boys, before a road that seemed daunting and scary, with many twists and turns, hills and valleys, some uh, arduous, a few smooth right, hills and valleys, right, supported though by family and friends, right, you moved forward cautiously yet confidently. You found that uh, the best knowledge right, was often gained right, and acquired through some pain. The greatest triumphs were won by sacrifice. 
Each milestone brought you new friendships, some so deep that they will last a lifetime. And the best teachers, administrators, coaches, refused to allow you to settle for nothing less than summoning up the best that you had within you. Some of the worst of times eventually became the best of times. Now we faculty and administrators so I must, as I said, pull to the side of the road and let you pass beyond us. Hopefully, you will discover that the road you continue on does have a name, Emmaus. Like those two first disciples of Jesus, may you always recognize Jesus in the breaking of the Eucharistic bread that you may recognize him in others and especially in that most challenging person yourself. God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Each year a member of the graduating class is selected to speak for the class on this occasion. This year the Senior Awards Committee and the senior class itself has selected McLean F. Farrell. I now call upon McLean to share his reflections on the experience of the class of 2020. Good afternoon, Father Devron, Dr. Petriello, members of the Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, parents, family, those watching from home, and especially members of the class of 2020. I'd like to begin by thanking the administration for their commitment to making this event happen for us and the alumni community who supported and inspired us with their thoughtful letters this spring. Over two months ago, I had the privilege to address you virtually as we celebrated the day that would have been our graduation from Fordham Prep. Today, I'm grateful to stand before you in person. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 reads, I've fought the good fight, I've finished the race, I've kept the faith. To me, St. Paul's words to his friend Timothy encapsulate not only our last four years of the prep, but these past few months of our lives. Years and months that were not always easy, and which didn't always go as expected, but during which we have constantly strived to move forward in the face of adversity. Today, we finally cross the finish line as brothers, having fought the good fight together. The last time I spoke to you, I said our class would strive for greatness, addressing and conquering the challenges our world to present to us. Already, many of you have proven me right, as the class of 2020 has begun to demonstrate just how great it is. Since May, I've witnessed classmates take tremendous steps as leaders, some of us standing together to demand social justice and societal change, others taking initiative and providing for those who've been afflicted by the coronavirus, including by helping keep the dreams of our younger prep brothers alive by donating time and money to raising funds for those Rams who, because of the present circumstances, may not be able to return to the prep this fall. We've also seen members of our class continue to excel athletically, as Aiden Curry will play for the MLB's Texas Rangers and Miguel Negrete will compete for the Honduran national track and field team this fall. Our successes have also been accompanied by some heartache, as we recently experienced a great loss of our former classmate, Brandon Hendricks, whose life was taken from us in an act, to quote our freshman mentor, Mr. Distinti, of cowardice and callous indifference to the sacredness of every human life. The losses we face together as a community serve as reminders to each of us today. Reminders about the fragility of our human lives and reminders to take advantage of each moment we are blessed with on this earth. Reminders that we have a higher purpose to live meaningful lives driven by faith, scholarship, and service. To be honest, giving this speech today is a bit surreal, since we are closer now than we were in May to beginning the next chapter of our lives. For most of us, these next few weeks will come with the realization that these are our final days at home, our last moments with our loved ones and with each other before moving on to college. But at the same time, today provides much needed closure to a period of our lives which couldn't be described in any other way than as uncertain. In the last five months, our lives have changed drastically and forever, as we've been called to persevere in ways we never could have imagined. 2020 will be a year the world will never forget. That is undeniable. 
But for the 242 of us graduating today, it will be much more than that. It will be the year from which we go forward together, stronger, smarter, more loving, and more driven than ever before. Because 2020 is the year that forged us into men, men of character, action, and empathy, men who will take the life-altering lessons these past five months have taught us and use them to fight the good fight for the rest of our lives as men for and with others. Men who will not only become the next generation of leaders in our world, but men who are well equipped with the tools to take on the many challenges this world will present to us and prevail. Despite all the hardship we've experienced this year, these most unusual circumstances have without a doubt taught us a variety of lessons. Lessons in perseverance, sure, but more importantly, personal lessons which will stick with us long after the conclusion of today's ceremony. The class of 2020 will not be defined by what we lost to this virus and all the hardship that it left in its wake, but by how we rose despite it. Touching on the need for our world to continue to move in the direction of positive change, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. Whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. In a similar thought, President Theodore Roosevelt uttered the words, the credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena. He who at his best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly. These great men from separate time periods speak of the same lessons we've learned this year. Sometimes life will throw you a curveball. Your plans will be derailed, your expectations thwarted, your dreams crushed. But it's how you rise from these defeats and continue to move forward that defines the men you will become. Our experiences at Fordham Prep and with each other have certainly echoed these great words, preparing us to continue pushing forward and persevering for the rest of our lives, to be men of action, men constantly in the arena, battling for what we believe in, moving forward, taking risks, and never settling. May these lessons, which we have learned here, remain with us as we move into this new and exciting chapter of our lives. May we always maintain a clear view of the unique plan that God has for each of us. And may Fordham Prep always remain a place we call home. Congratulations, and for the final time, may God bless the class of 2020. Thank you. Welcome back. It's great to, uh, to welcome you, and it gives me the greatest of pleasure to introduce our 2020 graduation speaker, Bob Gomprecht, class of 1965. The last time Bob was on the stage, uh, I'm not counting the four other times today, but uh, previously, uh, Bob was the principal of Fordham Prep, and he was running graduation as he had for a long, long time. Now, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Bob, and I know what you're thinking. You know, usually when someone introduces a graduation speaker, you hear about their diplomas and their professional um, accomplishments and, and those types of things. But I'd like to speak to you about how Bob made a difference for you in your four years as a Fordham Prep student. It's unquestionable that Bob brought Fordham Prep into the 21st century without abandoning faith, scholarship, and service, the traditions which led us here. Bob Gompruck reawakened the Jesuit nature of Fordham Prep by shaping it in conjunction with the Jesuit Secondary Schools Association into a mission-driven organization. Bob created a hiring procedure whereby being dedicated to the mission of Fordham Prep became a critical and indispensable component of being hired here. So that first and foremost, teachers were hired because they demonstrate a commitment to the Jesuit mission and the Ignatian character. As far as student formation goes, Bob presided over the rewriting of the grad at grad, and he made it specific to Fordham Prep. So that experience that you've had over these four years of what it means to be a graduate at graduation, which has led you to this very seat today. That is, in large part, due to Bob's toil, toil and work. And certainly, parents have seen that as well. Bob added a retreat 
for the faculty to the PREPS retreat program. And he supported the expansion of the student retreat program to include sophomore and junior year, the Emmaus retreat, which many of you had the privilege of making. In addition to mission, Bob knew that academic excellence should be at the heart of Fordham Prep's life. And as a result, he moved Fordham Prep into membership in the New York State Association of Independent Schools. And he substantially raised the admission standard to Fordham Prep. Bob began curriculum review here, and he started the expansion of the visual and performing arts program by making it a graduation requirement. Now, gentlemen, how many of you have ever gone to consultation at the end of a school day? Raise your hand. Well, Bob conceived and implemented that innovation at the end of every prep day. Raise your hand if you have taken an AP course. So Bob nearly doubled the number of AP courses at Fordham Prep, and he presided over the introduction of Mandarin to the Modern Language Department. Do we have any rowers in our midst? Anybody who was in the crew program during your four years at Fordham Prep? Let me see your hands. We got a few. Very good. Well, Bob introduced crew. How many people in this room ever played rugby before with the Fordham Prep program? Raise your hand. That had been dormant. That program had been dormant for many years, and, and Bob brought it back. There was no father's club until Bob pushed for it. And Bob was a driving force in the formation of Building Bridges, the prep organization dedicated to the dignity, respect, and equality of LGBTQ members of our community and beyond. There was no faculty development and supervision program at Fordham Prep until Bob created one. Bob was the author of the prep's significant increase in the hiring of female faculty. And he hired the first female academic administrator at Fordham Prep. Bob was always on the lookout to the future. And he shepherded the one-to-one -one device program here at Fordham Prep into what New York State Association of Independent Schools visitor once described as the most successful transition into that kind of technology that any school he had ever seen. But the hallmark of Bob's impact at Fordham Prep was in the freedom, the respect, and the love and care that he gave to each and every student who he came into contact with, and certainly his faculty. And they returned that as well. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce Bob and to welcome him back to Fordham Prep. Bob, thank you for being with us. Thank you, Chris. When I first heard that introduction several hours ago, I thought that says it all. I don't have to talk. But as I listened more recently, does it sound like an obituary? <laughs> Just asking. Mr. Mario Ciampi, the current board president, Mr. Paul Brusco, the former board president or chair, trustees, Father Deverin, Dr. Petriello, my former colleagues on the faculty and staff and administration, parents, revered guests, and those who are online, and particularly members of the class of 2020. It's an honor to be invited to give this address, and I thank you all. As John Denver sang, it's good to be back home again. Let me begin with a heartfelt shout out to the impressive and historic Fordham Prep class of 2020. Your accomplishments are so many and so fitting for a class that has shepherded Fordham Prep out of one decade and into another, all while a pandemic is going on. McLean, great job. We, we, we're talking about taking this on the road, right, you and me? 
McLean is wonderful, actually. Special congratulations to all you seniors for setting a Fordham Prep record that I don't believe will ever be broken for the longest senior cut day. <laughs> you must all be so proud. Last January, when I started thinking about what to say, before the pandemic tore into our lives, we had yet to experience all the suffering and personal pain and death it would bring. The quarantines, the homeschooling, the loss of social interaction, the prom, separation of families from loved ones who were sick, and all too often some of those family members dying alone. I want to acknowledge what a sad and painful way this must have been for you seniors to end your four years at the prep. I thought back to my own senior year. It would have been so very different without a prom, without a formal graduation, the camaraderie of signing each other's yearbooks, and all the wonderful things that bring closure to four great years at Fordham. I'm sure it feels like a severe wound that could color your interactions in the future with the prep. But I'm also aware that the prep and your family and friends invented many ways to try to celebrate your graduation. And I hope you realize just how proud of you we all are. I do wonder how my own class would have reacted had we been confronted by such profound and frustrating events. My class was always very close. Most of us loved our time at the prep. We learned a lot about ourselves. We made friends and developed respect for one another. We stayed in touch to this day. We come to reunions in huge numbers and renew friendships. I believe that if my class had experienced similar upheaval, we too would have suffered a wound similar to yours. But I also believe that our ties to each other and our pride in being graduates of Fordham Prep would probably have inevitably brought us back together at the prep. And my prayer is that this happens for all of you. As a concluding thought about this pandemic, I want to refer to a sermon that the Reverend Martin Luther King gave at the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church in Montgomery, Alabama in 1959 on Easter Sunday. From the first time I read this some years ago, these words struck a chord with me. King first recounts his recent visit to the Holy Land. And then he recalls falling on his knees and weeping during a visit to Calvary, the cross where Jesus died. He observes that Jesus' sacrifice on the cross was something nobody could demand him to do, making him Jesus, a man who had the amazing capacity to be obedient to unenforceable obligations. Then King declared that there are but three groups of people in this world. There are the lawless, those who break laws or don't abide by the codes of society. There are the law abiding, those whose standards of conduct derived from man-made law from societal values and customs. And he said, that's probably most of us. And then there are those who follow interior codes of conduct, rules that are larger than themselves. These are people who are obedient to the unenforceable. The people who in those beautiful words that Shakespeare spoke about Desdemona, in their goodness, they hold it something of a vice, something of an evil, not to do more than is required. He said, these are the people who make history and who change history. And he said, they come around occasionally. But the pandemic, my friends, has revealed that in fact, these people are all around us in emergency rooms and ICUs, cleaning hospitals and subways, in EMS trucks, and fire stations, in supermarkets and driving buses, living and working 
to help people outside their own homes despite the pandemic which engulfs us. They deserve our deepest thanks because for out, without them, as bad as things are, they would be much worse. Thank them today and thank them every day as best you can. My family's had a long association with Fordham Prep. My dad graduated from the prep in 1941. In 1937, he left his apartment on Briggs Avenue, 2603 Briggs, just up Fordham Road, where I lived actually as a young child, and walked a few blocks down to the Fordham campus, came in the gate down by the Metro North Station, and began his high school career at Fordham Prep. He was a good student. He lived with his parents, Charlotte, and Clarence Gompreck, my grandparents, and he also lived with his grandmother, Sarah Barr. Sarah Barr was an Irish woman. He was an only child, and the family struggled financially, particularly after my grandfather, who managed a theater, a movie theater, up on Fordham Road. There used to be two of them almost opposite each other just before you come to the concourse. He managed one of them, but lost his job in the Great Depression and when, was unable to em find employment after that. So when my dad was accepted to Fordham Prep, his parents had no money to pay the tuition. So his grandmother, Sarah Barr, who worked for many years, 22 years as a New York City policewoman, they were called matrons. She worked out of the 5-2, which is the red house down by the Botanical Garden Station. She paid the tuition. And I share this story to point out that my family's four-generation relationship with Fordham began the way it does for so many prep students. A smart, talented young man is accepted into Fordham Prep. His parents cannot pay the tuition, and family members band together to be sure to help cover the cost. And I would bet there are people in your class who have similar stories to tell. It's kind of part of the legend of Fordham Prep. And look what evolved from this generosity of my great-grandmother, Sarah Barr. After my dad, I graduated from the prep, the college, and the graduate school. My son, Bob, your classmate Matt's dad, graduated from the prep and the college. Bob's wife, Matt's mother, graduated from Fordham College. My son, Chris, graduated from Fordham Prep and Fordham Law School. His wife, Diana, graduated from Fordham Law School. That's where they met. Their oldest son, Luke, will be coming to Fordham Prep as a freshman next year. And beyond that, my daughter, Amy, went to Fordham College and Fordham Graduate School. My sister, Ellen, went to Fordham College. And my brother-in-law, Jimmy Heafy, graduated from the prep. There are two more people, family members, who did not attend Fordham, but I count them in this this legacy, by virtue of their support over many years, they are truly members of our Fordham family. My mom, Kathleen, who is now the matriarch of our family, as loving and sharp and supportive and feisty as ever in her 90s. And my bride, Alana, who has been my companion, my counselor, my truest friend, and my love for over 50 years. We were married when we were 12. <laughs> what an incredible legacy. So on, by, on behalf of my family, thank you, Sarah Barr. She's up there somewhere watching. And thanks to all the unrecognized family and friends who have helped to make Fordham Prep education possible for over so many years to so many deserving young men. Some final thoughts to take with you as you leave the prep. And these derive from thinking about what impresses me about alumni that I have met. And I've met a lot of alumni. There are 10,000 alumni who went through Fordham Prep while I taught and administrated here. And about half of them, 5,000, have my name on their diploma, which I'm sure they display proudly. Another 187 are my classmates from Fordham Prep. So I've asked myself what impresses me about these people as I get to know them and meet them and know them as adults. 
I want to tell a quick story. One of my next door neighbors is a New York City fireman. Great guy, went to another Catholic school in the Bronx, but his younger brother went to Fordham Prep, and he holds Fordham Prep in very high esteem. And sometimes he'd come home and we'd be chatting, he'd say, you know, this new guy came into the firehouse today, we got ch chatting, and it turns out he went to Fordham Prep. And he would ask me, why would anybody go to Fordham Prep and then become a fireman? To him, it just didn't seem to compute. But I shared with him how central the concept of service to others is in Jesuit education, and it's certainly alive and well at Fordham Prep. And I think he, he finally got it. I don't think you could pick a better profession than the fire department or the police department to live out a life of service. And I want to tell you, I'm very proud of our alums who work in service to others. And if you have that opportunity to work directly in service for others, that's awesome. But even if you don't, you should set aside some time to perform service, perhaps in your community. Make service an important part of your life. Other things that impressed me, the habit of reflection. You spent four years practicing the art of reflection. In the Jesuit world, the instrument created by Ignatius for reflection is the examine. And you have done probably hundreds of them in your time at the school. It's looking back at a period of time, a day, a week. And what, what Ignatius would have said is it's looking for God in your life and what happened that caused you consolation or gave you desolation. But we tend to think of it more today as looking back and seeing God's presence in your life, what drew you closer to God and what drove him away? And you can use that technique to reflect on relationships in your family and your friends, even colleagues. But in any case, make reflection an important part of your life. There are other things you're bringing from Fordham Prep. You're good students, but more than that, we want you to love yourselves for the many gifts that you've been given, to extend yourselves in loving ways to others, to think for yourself and not allow others to manipulate you. If that's for me, I'm busy. Um, nor do you want to manip we don't want you to manipulate others for your own gain. We don't want you to be dog eat dog competitive, but rather competent cooperative, decisive young men who compete with a moral sense. We want you every day to solve your own problems. Make these traits an important part of your life. Because we do not know what the future holds, but we do know, whatever it is, it involves change. It will require us to step out of our comfort zones because there's a greater need, a greater challenge, a greater glory of God that draws us, that even compels us to do this. Even now, we see so much injustice, so much prejudice, so much doubt, and so much division. We are being called to step out more courageously as the world around us changes at a more rapid rate. And if our view of the world is not evolving, it soon will become irrelevant. Make continued growth an important part of your life. There's an old Broadway show called The Chorus Line. It's the story of actors and actresses trying out to be in the chorus of a Broadway show. The chorus are the folks behind the stars. They sing, they dance, they all aspire to be stars, some will get there. They become, during these trials, they become very close. They support each other. But toward the end of the tryouts, they're coming to an end as the play is winding down. And one actor, whose name is Paul, has already actually landed a role in the play. He falls and badly injures his leg during a rehearsal. He has to be carted off the stage and will probably never dance again. And after he's carried off, the remaining 
try out folks stand in disbelief, realizing that their careers also could end in a second. And after some discussion, they agree that they dance and sing because they love it. And whatever happens to them, they will be free of regret. And they express that feeling in a song. That, the words of that song have often guided me as I considered next steps in my life. I would wonder when the direction that I chose was complete, if I would be able to look back and feel that these words described my experience. Five years ago, I met with the faculty and staff for Fordham Prep to announce that I was leaving the prep. But I wanted my colleagues to understand how strong my feelings were for them and for the prep. And so I concluded that meeting with the words of the song. That's how I would like to conclude this presentation. I hope these words resonate with you as you look back at your four years at Fordham Prep and embark on the next phase of your life's journey. And if they don't quite resonate yet, I hope that with a little distance and time that they will, that you'll look back and find that these words do, in fact, represent your time at Fordham Prep. The song is called What I Did for Love. The words are, kiss today goodbye, the sweetness and the sorrow. Wish me luck, the same to you, but I can't regret what I did for love. Look, my eyes are dry. The gift was ours to borrow. It's as if we always knew. And I won't forget what I did for love. Gone. Love is never gone. As we travel on, love's what we'll remember. So kiss today goodbye and point me towards tomorrow. We did what we had to do. Won't regret, won't forget what I did for love. Gentlemen, in the words of St. Ignatius, whose feast day we celebrate today, your job now is to go forth and set the world on fire. God bless all of you. Thank you, Bob, for your beautiful words. In my office, I actually proudly display my own diploma from Fordham Prep, which is one of the 5,000 that Bob signed during his tenure as, as principal. And I'm, I'm humbled and privileged to carry on his work um, with gratitude for his leadership, and it's leadership that formed me when I was a student here and as an alumnus. So again, Bob, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for sharing your words five times. And Father President, on the recommendation of the faculty of Fordham Preparatory School, I am pleased to present to you for diplomas of graduation the following students who have successfully completed the prescribed course of studies at Fordham Preparatory School. On the recommendation of the faculty and by the vote of the Board of Trustees, and I turn to them now, you recall this vote, do you not? Yes. I am pleased to award diplomas of graduation to the class of 2020. A professional photographer will take a photograph of each graduate as he receives his diploma. The sample picture will be sent to your home or email address. We ask your cooperation by not interfering with the photographer and staying in your seats as we call up our graduates. I would also ask PrEP alumni and those associated with Fordham PrEP or Fordham University who are presenting diplomas to come up with your graduate and accompany him onto the stage. And gentlemen, since we haven't had a graduation rehearsal, I'm going to give you a few cues and the first one would be for all of our graduates in the first row to please stand and move to your right and line up in alphabetical order with our staff, maintain some distance, and we'll call you up one at a time. Leonard Joseph Raitano. Congratulations. 
Alexander Russo. Niall P. Ryan, not present. <laughs> Mr. Stephen Saljanin, class of 1997, will present the diploma to his son, Christian Saljanin. Leo Arthur Samuel. Christian J. Santana. Jason A. Sands. Malik J. Saunders. Sean Patrick Scanlon. Andrew B. Siaka. Makai W. Simpson. Will our graduates in the second row pr please rise and line up to your right? Daniel P. Smith. Nicholas J. Sedano. Grant William Steven. John Albert Zapansky. Damani A. Thomas. Stephen D. Thompson. Connor James Tinson. Connor Daniel Tobin. Ethan J. Todd, not present. Matthew Elijah Tolan. Christopher J. Torres. Jake J. Torres Serrano. Joseph N. Tran. Dominic T. Trenert. Will our graduates in the third row please rise and line up to your right. Dawson Joseph Trescalo. Felipe D. Trinidad Pillier. Marco F. Trombetta. Mr. Lawrence Colkin, Jr., class of 1963, will present the diploma to his grandson, Theodore C. Subris. 
Brett Michael Turnbull. Patrick Joseph Uglum. Anthony A. Utombua Nochukwu. Nicholas J. Valdez. Hudson McMahon Vell, not present. <laughs> Maximus Z. Vicenti, not present. <laughs> Robert John Wojciech II. <laughs> Nathan E. Wager. Zachary A. Wallace. Devin Michael Walpole. Will our graduates in the last row please rise and line up. Mrs. Corinne Walsh, Fordham Prep staff, will present the diploma to her son, James M. Walsh. Stefan Armani Walter. <laughs> Daniel James White. <laughs> Jack Connor Winyarski. <laughs> Tristan Gar Chai Wong. Kevin David Woods. Eric Hilton Yost. Fabiano Zanetti. And Robert A. Zanola. Ladies and gentlemen, the historic Fordham Prep class of 2020. Congratulations, gentlemen. if I didn't uh, thank three distinct groups. First and foremost, to the class of 2020, I would like to thank you. You know, all of those, that list that uh, Mr. Gomprecht ran through of all the things that you missed as a result of this pandemic, not being able to celebrate prom and all of those end of year events that brought you together as a class, uh, certainly that was a sacrifice. But do not doubt that that sacrifice helped others stay healthy and helped people stay alive. So already you will be remembered for your senior year as becoming extraordinary men for others. Thank you. <laughs> Secondly, uh, you see around besides um, several of our faculty. Now, uh, Mr. Gomprecht, I'm going to draw upon your remarks once again because you quoted from Martin Luther King Jr. 
from his sermon at the Dexter Church on Easter Sunday, and he spoke of three types of persons. And the third type was the type of person who transcends to commit to something larger than himself or herself and is guided by internal, interior courage and conviction to do the right. We've all been reading about teachers and what is going to occur in the next few weeks. And uh, along that list that Mr. Gomprecht had of all the people in our society who deserve our praise, whether they were frontline workers or worked in ICUs or ERs, uh, teachers certainly do deserve our gratitude. So we thank you not only for the four years that you gave these gentlemen, but also for what you will commit ahead. Thank you. And finally, um, the last group to thank, we would be remiss if we didn't thank this group, and this is usually part of our rehearsal, so you don't know this, but you have a Fordham Prep Diploma, so I'm expecting you to kind of figure out what to do. Um, if you had had an opportunity to request this of me, you would have asked me to, if you could thank your parents for all they have done for you. So now I invite you to do just that. Gentlemen, thank your parents. It has truly been a memorable four years, class of 2020, and Fordham Prep will always be and have a home for you. Please stay engaged with Fordham Prep. I know that uh, Mr. Gonzalez, our Vice President of Engagement and Development, would want to make sure that you understand the full meaning of engagement. Continue to be generous with your time and your service to all of us, to this community, because you have now joined an exceptional group the Fordham Prep alumni body. Your accomplishments in college and beyond, but perhaps most importantly, the service that you render to your neighbor in need will enhance the already illustrious history of Fordham Prep alumni throughout the ages. God bless you and thank you. Everyone is kindly asked to stand and join in the singing of the alma mater. The words may be found in the back of your graduation program. That's cool. 
Ladies and gentlemen, at the conclusion of this fifth and final session, I finally declare the 175th commencement of Fordham Preparatory School adjourned. As we conclude our ceremony with the singing of the ram, just one quick announcement. After the song concludes, we invite our families to move on to the backfield to spend a few moments taking photos before we exit. Gentlemen, the ram. Thank you.